Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned, we are working according to Swiss time, and my Swiss watch says it is time to start. Uh, we, uh, we had a very uh, lengthy conversation in the morning. We have not exhausted yet the list of speakers, and uh, I am calling on uh, Marcus, Marcus Kummer, uh, to take the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I would like to say a few words about the best practice forums. I was planning to come in uh, tomorrow when we discuss about intersessional activities, but many speakers have already uh, touched on that. And as you asked me uh, to uh, conclude the work on this with the Secretariat, uh, I would like uh, to report briefly on uh, the outcome documents. Uh, many people uh, already have pointed out that these are most very useful work, but also that there is room for improvement, and they have already pointed out that maybe the biggest challenge was the li limited time at our disposal to conduct this work. Nevertheless, I think uh, I'm happy to report that uh, last week uh, the Secretariat posted the final uh, documents, and they are substantive documents. Uh, if you uh, have not yet done so, I would strongly encourage you all to take a look on the website and look at the uh, reports. You don't have to read every page of them together. I think it's quite a substantive uh, compilation of work, but uh, at least read the executive summaries. They give you uh, an overview of the main findings, and they also point to fu future work. They make suggestions for work that could be carried on. Uh, now, Obviously, uh, there was limited time at the disposal uh, of the experts dealing with this work, so they are not to be considered to be the final truth on any of these issues, but they point towards uh, further elements that could be uh, deepened. And maybe not all of the uh, subject chosen were equally well suited for best practice forums. They Essentially, the original proposal uh, put forward by the Internet Society for reviving uh, best practice forums was to seek inspiration from the Internet Engineering Task Force to develop uh, outcomes that could be adopted on a voluntary basis. And that also points to what many people have already alluded to, that this should be seen as ongoing works uh, that is a process where the annual meeting is a halt in the process, but it's not an end in itself, but it is a place where we can take stock and discuss on how to move forward. Uh, in my opinion, maybe the, those with the most uh, concrete practical outcomes were the best practice forums related to uh, SPAM and those on certs, where actually the experts concluded that cert maybe was not the best definition, and they suggested another uh, acronym, and that is C-cert, and there are reasons for them to do so that can be read in the report. I don't want to uh, overextend my speaking slot, but uh, once again, uh, I think all the suggestions uh, deserve close attention on whether or not to continue the work. And it has also, of course, resource implications, as the Secretariat will need to be staffed in accordance uh, with the workload uh, given. And also, uh, I think it will need uh, considerable uh, work investment by the members of the uh, multi-stakeholder advisory group. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, thank you, Marius, sorry, Marcos, for your report uh, and uh, suggestions. And uh, let me use this opportunity uh, to thank uh, Constance and, and then yourself uh, for take, taking up and coordinating uh, the work, which uh, seems has uh, uh, received a lot of positive feedback and uh, seems to me will be continued also uh, next year. Uh, next on my list is uh, Leah, 
Leah Kaspar, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as I'm speaking for the first time, I'd like to introduce myself. So my name is Leah Kaspar. I'm from Croatia, and I'm a new MAG member from the civil society community. Um, I'd like to reinforce a couple of points that were made this morning and perhaps strengthen one thing that uh, didn't come across as strongly as I would have hoped for. Um, in terms of looking back, I'd just like to echo the previous speakers uh, in recognizing the important steps that were made uh, this year um, towards implementing recommendations for IGF improvements, especially through the work done in the best, with the best practice forums. I'd like to join everyone who has thanked the work of uh, Constance and uh, the Secretariat and the other MAG members in pushing that work forward. Um, this is closely related with the calls to set up and structure the intercessional work uh, going forward, and I uh, hope that we will have enough time tomorrow to discuss concrete proposals. I think at the end of this meeting, we would like to have concrete steps on how that's going to progress, uh, and I'll be happy to join that, uh, that conversation. And some, just quickly, something on the on in going forward and the lessons from this year. Uh, the point that I'd like to emphasize, and this was touched upon in the synthesis report, it's about the need is about the need for to coordinate between uh, the need for coordination between the IGF and other forums and processes that are taking place. As we all know, and I mean the IGF does not operate in a vacuum and the relationships are two-directional. So it's not only about what the IGF projects and the, what the comes out of the community discussions taking place here, um, but also what happens outside affects what happens with the IGF. Um, so on that, in terms of the what happens outside and how it affects what we do here, one important thing is uh, that discussions happening right now in New York about IGF renewal, and uh, several spe speakers have mentioned this, and just a suggestion in that regards is for the MAG members and the MAG as a whole to be much more prominent communicator in the value of the IGF, the role of the IGF in the overall system. I think it was uh, my colleague from uh, Macedonia who made the point about needing to have a communication strategy and think we could do a better job in communicating and not just the value of the IGF but also the progress that, have, that has been made particularly the last couple of years. So that's one point. And the second point, and building on that, is um, how the IGF community could be used as a proactive, just providing input into other processes, and so not just be reactive in terms of what's happening outside. Uh, perhaps an example is the WISIS review uh, taking place next year. Uh, I think it would be great if next year's IGF could look at the um, stable com draft that is produced in November, but I do think that it is important to have something happening before that. I don't know whether it's feasible, but one way of doing it is to make sure that the intercessional work topics take on something that is relevant for these processes so that we have something happening before next year's IGF that we can then use to input into those processes going forward. Um, yeah, I'll stop there for now. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you for your contribution. You did not sound at all as a, as a new uh, MAG member. You sounded already as a fully fledged and very experienced MAG member. So thank you. Um, ICC basis is next. And for the moment, the last. Ah. Please, ICC basis. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Thomas Reno, and I am the new uh, lead for the ICC basis secretariat. This is my first MAG as well. I'm not a MAG member, but I'm uh, very pleased to be here and uh, participating with, uh, with everyone. I'd like to uh, extend a personal thank you to the IGF secretariat and MAG chair for coordinating this meeting, as well as the warm welcome and inclusion of uh, all of us non-MAG members. ICC basis members wish to congratulate the host country of Turkey, the organizers, the IGF secretariat team, the UN DESA on a successful event in 2014. We look forward to working with all of our stakeholders uh, to, to prepare another successful IGF in 2015. 
In the spirit of solidarity from one international organization secretariat team to another, let me express our special thanks and recognition to Chengatai Masengo and the IGF secretariat team whose professionalism and tireless efforts for the IGF and its community of stakeholders deserves very much appreciation. So a lot of discussion uh, has occurred already on the topic of intercessional work today. Business sees this as a very important and substantive new addition to the IGF 2015 program and beyond. In fact, ICC Basis has made a specific recommendation with regards to intercessional work in our written submission. We will share an abridged version of that proposal for discussion and consideration when the scheduled dis discussion comes up tomorrow. But I'll just highlight about six elements from that proposal for your consideration. The first one is the linkage between intercessional work and the mag chair summary for IGF 2014. We also want to speak about a process for inclusive, wide-ranging, and bottom-up stakeholder, multi-stakeholder multi views for inclusion in that intercessional work and a process for managing the online engagement and face-to-face -face dialogue across stakeholder holders in the working groups, including the need to strengthen the Secretariat as a neutral, credible platform for facilitating these discussions. And a set of parameters in which the MAG needs to consider by which a theme for intercessional work can be chosen through a consensus process. Linkages involving national and regional IGFs contributing to the intercessional work and in turn usage of the intercessional work and output for substantive capacity building in country and in region, not just in 2014, 15, but, a, but beyond. And finally, we have recommended a topic for consideration along with any others that might come in during the di discussions. We will table a proposal tomorrow, but note that this uh, proposal has been covered in the ICC basis taking stock and looking forward submission that has already been posted on the IGF website. Thank you. So <clears throat> thank you very much. My apologies to Baher. Uh, simply Chengit, I uh, hid the, the list from me. He just wanted to, to get over this agenda item. Baher, please. Uh, thank you, Anis. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bahar Asmat. I'm with ICANN. Um, this is going to be a quick um, intervention. Much has already been um, said. I just wanted to um, echo um, a couple of um, important points that have already been mentioned. Uh, one um, uh, was in relation to um, the um, uh, improvement um, of the IGF outcomes uh, and making them more, uh, more visible. Um, uh, much has been said about the um, best practice forums experience, which in my view at least um, uh, is a very good experience and uh, led to uh, a number of um, outcome documents that are very tangible and I think what we need to do is to make them uh, very visible too. Um, and um, though the documents um, have been posted on the IGF website, um, I don't know whether uh, they have been um, um, uh, sent to uh, other uh, organizations, um, uh, you know, whether UN or non-UN organizations or other internet governance-related bodies. Um, this was also one of the uh, recommendations of the CSCD working group is to uh, improve the linkages uh, between IGF and other IG-related uh, bodies. So this is an example that we need to, um, or this is an experience that we need to, um, you know, leverage and to um, uh, make it um, uh, successful and to build uh, to build on it uh, of course the other um, uh, the other document that came out of the IGF meeting was also the chair report uh, which was also very informative and it, it also needs to be shared with uh, you know the broader um, uh, the broader IG um, uh, community the other uh, point is in relation, relation to intercessional work um, I too think this is uh, an important um, development for uh, for the IGF um, I am sure that we're going to have more time to uh, discuss uh, about topics and issues to uh, take on uh, for the intercessional work uh, but something which is very important and it was mentioned by the uh, previous um, speaker is about resources um, you know um, uh, taking on intercessional work uh, without um, having the adequate resources on the secretariat uh, side um, is, um, is is not practical so we need to make sure 
sure that we have the resources, whether human resources, uh, whether technology resources as well. Talking about intersessional work that uh, would, um, uh, in my view, involve um, MAG as well as other non-MAG uh, members uh, requires um, um, online tools that um, enable um, uh, the broader uh, you know, community to participate and to engage. So we also need to make sure that we have uh, such uh, tools um, uh, in place. Thank you. Thank you, Bahir, for your comments and uh, advice. And now I'm turning to remote participant. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this, this is Izumi Okutani, a MAG member serving for the second year. And it's really great to see a couple of um, several specific feedbacks on improvements for the coming IGF. Actually, Boher has covered a lot of the things that I wanted to say, and I'd like to touch about intersessional work and transparency briefly. So um, I think I do echo with the need for um, more strengthening, strengthening intersessional work. And one possible approach is to address um, and building on what is already being done. And I'd like to raise best practices forum as an example of work which was carried out in uh, 2014 and which received positive feedbacks. And this, of course, doesn't mean that the only intersessional work would be restricted to best practices. But I think there are things that we can learn from its experiences. It did demonstrate that um, we were able to work online and uh, through some teleconferences, mailing list, um, before and after the session. And I think there are things that we'd like to consider in addition, which I think Bohair has, has covered as outreach is, a, is one of the topics, which I would like to emphasize as well. And in addition to outreaching to a wide range of um, stakeholders, I think it's also important that we make sure we reach, we reach out to the stakeholders of a particular topic. For example, if we take like intersessional work for IXPs, I think we really want to make sure that we reach out to IXPs and its customer at the minimum. And we want to be a little bit more strategic about uh, outreaching uh, when we consider intersessional work uh, so that uh, we are reaching out to the people who are affected and rather than leaving outreach on volunteer basis. So um, that's something that I'd like to talk, um, mention about intersessional work. And I'd also lastly like to mention briefly about transparency. I think transparency on the contents and the program of the IGF is very important. And I did feel that uh, this year um, we did quite a good job um, on workshops, especially with Susan and Fiona's initiative in documenting workshop selection criteria. But one thing I would like to raise as an additional room for improvements is transparency for sessions which are not planned by MAG members. For example, I heard some feedback individually that it is not clear how speakers for opening and closing sessions are chosen. There may be similar issues for other sessions which are not are planned by MAG members. So even if the speakers not, are not uh, openly called for or selected based on public submissions. It still helps to clarify how they are chosen, whether they're based on invitation or some other certain criteria, especially for uh, clarifying what to do for government-related uh, meetings. So um, that's all for me. Thank you. So thank you very much, Izumi, for your comments. Um, and thank you for joining us. Uh, answering your question, I think there is no mystery how the opening and closing sessions are constructed. That is, they are constructed uh, uh, upon uh, proposals and initiative by secretariat. In the opening sessions, we normally tend to uh, uh, let ministers who are present to talk, uh, as well as uh, representatives of all stakeholder groups. Uh, to make their comments and basically the same thing in the closing session. I, I see that Cengita is very nervous no, no, uh, looking, nervous looking, looking <laughs> at me and maybe is discovering what, uh, how the 
uh, opening and, and closing sessions are constructed. I could expand. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, in, es in essence, that is, that is how, how they are. And we, we, th we see if there are any specific issues that we need to address immediately uh, without any delay and, and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, Cengita, please uh, continue. Yes, as Jana says, um, for governments, if a um, government minister comes, he gets to speak in the opening um, session. For the civil society, we ask the civil society uh, groups to nominate two speakers, as same for business. So we ask the stakeholder group to nominate their own speakers. Thank you. So thank you for not contradicting me, <laughs> because that is on the record. <laughs> and, uh, and now everybody who will be asking how, how, the, how these sessions are constructed will have a chance to, to read that. So we have another uh, remote participant, as I understand. Yes, again from Marilia Maciel from Brazil. She says the overarching theme of the IGF 2014 was not very clear and it was hard to connect it with the sessions. The IGF 2015 will take place a little while before the WISIS review, and it should be informed by this context. The WISIS process is a cornerstone of Internet governance and the base for the existence of the IGF. The discussions in IGF 2015 should be broadly oriented towards questioning A, an assessment of the development of the information society. What does an inclusive people-centered, development-oriented information society mean today? B, what changed in the scenario since 2005? And C, what should be the main challenges post-2015? Although the WISIS high-level event has set the vision for the post-WISIS work, for the post-WISIS, work still needs to be done in framing that vision clearly. Being our main multi-stakeholder platform, the IGF could contribute to this effort when discussing issues under its sub-themes. Thank you. So thank you, Marcia, for your uh, contribution and proposals. I, I think that the overarching theme is uh, uh, full of symbolisms, and, uh, and of course it's uh, rather abstract, um, and most probably will remain like this because uh, um, there is an attempt uh, to combine many different issues in, in a very brief uh, sentence. Uh, and um, that is why that allows also a certain degree of interpretation. So I do not see any further requests for the floor, and I do not have um, uh, remote participants on this subject. So let me try maybe uh, to sum up uh, discussions. and. Um, um, what, what I heard uh, in these interventions was that uh, the uh, overall assessment of the IGF Istanbul meeting is very positive, and uh, we need to uh, continue uh, working, advancing in, in the same direction with the same approach that we took in preparing Istanbul meeting to be guided by the um, uh, recommendations of the Working Group on Improvement of IGF and uh, to strive uh, to implement the recommendations uh, particularly on a number of issues. Those were uh, uh, seeking more uh, uh, tangible outputs uh, from IGF and better communicating them. I think that this, this is uh, one of the key uh, that we need to look at very uh, seriously and see how um, well we can develop that, that part of uh, our activities. Because if we look backwards and see the contributions or outputs of nine uh, previous IGFs, we certainly see that there is a wealth of documentation, wealth of knowledge. And uh, one cannot say that IGF hasn't produced anything. I think IGF has produced a, a lot of documentation, a lot of ideas, a lot of materials, a lot of knowledge, <coughs> but that knowledge may not be <coughs> uh, properly communicated and, and used. And, and uh, find the best way how to do communication 
uh, maybe is uh, something we should look at. Uh, best practice, uh, best practices, uh, seems to me got really good traction and good reviews. Uh, the only thing, uh, what was mentioned that there were not enough, there was not enough time uh, to uh, develop uh, materials, and I fully agree. And therefore, intention is to uh, discuss best practice teams uh, tomorrow and day after and start the process uh, of uh, compilation of those best practices as soon as we will walk out of this room uh, on Wednesday evening. Uh, another element that I, th I heard here in this discussion, but I do not recall reading in synthesis document, is trying to reach out those uh, communities or those industries particularly that haven't been present in IGF so far. And uh, I, I think that this is uh, something we need to uh, uh, think very strongly and find a way how to uh, get more uh, fresh participants, fresh blood uh, in uh, our enterprise. Um, the most uh, comments were received uh, about intercessional work. Uh, alongside with a uh, caution that we need uh, not to overstretch and align our desires on intercessional work with our uh, resources, both financial resources and um, human resources. Uh, and again, I think that this will be one of the topics that we really need to drill down uh, and maybe identify uh, what are what would be those topics that we could what we could uh, take up, and what would be those modalities of intercessional work, without uh, overloading already a very heavy list of meetings, IGF related meetings or uh, internet governance related meetings, and see whether whether and in what way we could use national uh, IGF and regional IGF conferences. Uh, in order to uh, address those uh, topics that we could uh, possibly identify. And as you recall, in a uh, uh, synthesis paper, there, there are two proposals that uh, we may want to look at. Uh, one, one of them was about uh, how uh, the policy mix uh, in, in finding, uh, no, in bringing next billion online and and another one was uh, the the impact of internet on jobs and skills so i'm not saying that these are the only ones but but remember these these were mentioned by and submitted for consideration uh, uh during the comment period so um and most importantly is not to forget all these lessons that we have identified during our work. I remember we started uh, preparations for IGF Istanbul with the good intentions, and uh, uh, we ended up a little bit compromising those good intentions because of the pressures from, from different sides and the uh, need to accommodate dif different uh, uh, sort of proposals. So uh, let us be uh, as strong as we can be uh, in order to uh, take those lessons into account uh, when we will be designing a program of um, uh, next year. So I would like to thank all those who participated in the discussion and who made submissions uh, in writing, analyzing uh, the successes and challenges of I IGF uh, in Istanbul. And once again, thank you to Istanbul, uh, Istanbul meeting hosts, uh, the government and administration of Turkey for uh, hosting us and uh, letting us have very successful meeting. So now we're bringing to uh, going to the next agenda item, uh, which is overview of existing internet governance initiatives and their impact on IGF 2015. So here I would like to make a little, little uh, point of caution. This segment or this uh, discussion that we will have after presentations uh, is not to or was not meant to be 
expressing our attitudes uh, towards one or another uh, information that we will hear, but rather to think how these um, uh, processes that we will be informed about may impact preparations of I IGF Brazil and what, uh, what issues we need really to take into consideration based on the information that we will receive now. And uh, we will start with the first presentation about the outcomes of ITU Plenipotentiary Conference uh, that, have, uh, that have relevance to Internet governance. And uh, we will hear from, from Ms. Uh, Doreen Bogdan-Martin, Chief of Strategic Planning and Membership uh, Department of ITU. Doreen, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, um, Yanis, and good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you here to, to the ITU. As Mr. Uh, Rancy mentioned to you this morning, the ITU has recently concluded its 19th plenipotentiary conference, uh, which was held um, from the 20th of October to the 7th of November in Busan, uh, Korea. Uh, the conference brought together some 2,500 delegates from 171 countries. We considered 452 proposals, and we ended up approving 21 new resolutions, and we also amended 51 um, resolutions. The importance of our plenipotentiary conference is to set the strategic agenda for the Union for the next four-year period. So we approved our strategic plan, and we also approved our financial plan. Uh, we elected the new ITU senior management, the 48 members of council, and the 12 members of our radio regulation board. As some of you may know, uh, the conference in its first plenary meeting uh, took an important decision, and that was a decision to open up all input documents to the conference as well as the output document to the conference. And that decision was reached very quickly by consensus, and it's important to underscore the word consensus because I think our pl plenipotentiary conference was so successful because from the first plenary session through until the end of the conference, all member states demonstrated that good spirit of consensus. It was also an important decision because uh, it was a sign of transparency and openness, and that's something that many of you in this room have been calling for, uh, as well as members of civil society. The conference also decided to open up the plenary uh, meetings and the substantive meetings of the committees uh, to um, non-password uh, protected um, webcasts. So the webcast for those sessions uh, was open uh, to all. And we certainly had a lot of interest and a lot of, a lot of followers in, in those sessions. Uh, I would also like to mention that the conference did not have a single point of order, and we did not have any vote during those three weeks. Uh, we did have some difficult issues on the table. Uh, we had some very long hours, in particular, on the Internet resolutions. Uh, our chair of that particular group spent some 51 hours with many of you in this room. Uh, but the, the results were, were quite positive and, and we're very happy with, uh, with the outcome. The conference also introduced a number of, uh, of new innovations. We had our first ever uh, gender empowerment and mainstreaming award, uh, and one of the awardees is sitting in the back of this room uh, from, from APC. Uh, I would like to recognize her. She was awarded at our plenipotentiary conference uh, with, with six uh, other uh, amazing uh, individuals and organizations. We also introduced a young ICT policy leaders track. That was an important innovation. We brought some 50 young persons from around the world, and we had special sessions uh, for those young ICT policy leaders. Uh, we also held a number of roundtables under the theme of Connect 2020. 
And we also had uh, two briefings with civil society, uh, as well as an open Q&A with the Secretary General uh, elect, Mr. Hulin Zhao. Uh, and the last sort of innovation that we introduced was we uh, crowdsourced a resolution on youth. It was tabled in the summer months, and we opened that up. Uh, it's the first time we've ever opened up a resolution to get uh, public input, and then that resolution was retabled by a number of member states, and it was finally endorsed by the plenipotentiary. Uh, I see many uh, familiar faces in this room and many colleagues that were were with us at the plenipotentiary, so I won't go through uh, each and every outcome. Um, in terms of big picture, as I mentioned, we did endorse our strategic plan. Uh, one thing I want to stress with the strategic plan, that's also a document that we put out for open consultation. Uh, we didn't get a huge take up, but I think it's a, a beginning of a, of a new way of working uh, here at the ITU. We did endorse our, our financial plan, and we also have a new resolution on Connect 2020, which, which sets out a number of, of goals and some, some clear targets. And we know if you can't measure it, uh, it usually doesn't get done, and so we, we are seeking to try to have targets so that we can measure and make sure that it does get done. Just quickly on the Connect 2020 uh, goals, we have a goal on growth, we have a goal on inclusiveness, we have a goal on sustainability, and we have a goal on innovation. And those four goals will uh, basically set the direction for the union over the next four years, but they are also uh, goals that are not for the organization uh, on its own, but something that we encourage all stakeholders uh, to take up and, and hope that we can achieve uh, by 2020. Uh, we also had some, um, some great discussion on, uh, on the WISIS, on the WISIS plus 10 process, uh, and our member states have asked us to uh, carry on hosting uh, the WISIS forum, which we intend to do uh, for the moment. The dates are set uh, at the end of May, uh, and of course, those uh, decisions in the area of WISIS will be subject, of course, to those decisions that the General Assembly will take at the end of, at the end of 2015. Uh, the conference, um, I would say, uh, reinforced uh, the union's role in the area of Internet and, and cybersecurity. Um, the Council Working Group on Internet, International Internet Public Policy Issues uh, is now empowered to conduct both physical and online consultations. You may recall uh, that in the past it was just online, uh, and now we are very pleased that we can also do physical uh, consultations together with the Council Working Group uh, on International Internet Public Policy Issues. In terms of the Council Working Group on Child Online Protection, we are very pleased that the plenipotentiary agreed to uh, open up that Council Working Group to all relevant stakeholders, and we think that's important, and it will certainly, certainly bring the debate to, uh, to a higher level. As well, in terms of that group, uh, the output documents that will come out of that Council Working Group will also be open to the public, uh, and we will also be holding one-day online consultations for youth uh, the day prior to the Council Working Group on Child Online Protection. Uh, the conference also stressed the need for affordable international internet connectivity, and they also stressed the importance of multilingualism. Uh, and those of you that are familiar uh, with the ITU resolutions, that's Resolution 133, uh, and all member states um, encouraged uh, per paying particular attention to the issue uh, of multilingualism. Uh, in terms of IXPs, of course, uh, uh, member states were encouraged to uh, establish uh, IXPs, and ITU uh, was encouraged to help uh, member states in the area of capacity building, in particular towards least developed countries. Uh, the urgency of facilitating the transition from IPv4 uh, to I IPv6 uh, was also reiterated. 
and ITU was asked to continue uh, to work closely with other organizations, in particular in relation to capacity building efforts. Throughout these discussions, we saw uh, a recognition and an appreciation of the multi-stakeholderism process. Um, member states were particularly pleased with the multi-stakeholder preparatory process that was used to prepare the WISIS Plus 10 high-level event uh, earlier this year, and they were also pleased with the way that the informal experts group ran that prepared the WTPF uh, in 2013. There were a number of, uh, of other uh, resolutions that were uh, endorsed. Uh, one resolution in regards to academia. Uh, we had a new decision uh, regarding our academic members. Now if they join ITU, they don't have to join a sector. They can join uh, the union as a whole. And so we're excited about implementing that resolutions. Uh, we also had a new resolution on, f on flight um, tracking, and they will have their first meeting uh, this, this coming spring. We had a resolution on uh, using ICTs to combat Ebola. We had another new resolution on uh, protecting users and consumers, uh, a new resolution on youth, as I mentioned before. Uh, a new resolution on combating uh, counterfeit devices, um, a new resolution on the Internet of Things, uh, and a new one on connectivity of broadband uh, networks and, and many others. Uh, we do have uh, available online for free the, the final acts uh, as they were presented to the Plenipotentiary Conference, and the final, final document, once it gets numbered, will, um, will also be um, be placed um, on the internet and will be available uh, for for free. Um, and so, as we as we look forward to to next year, um, the ITU will be celebrating next year its 150th anniversary on May 17th. The ITU will turn uh, 150 years. Uh, we will be celebrating next year all year. Uh, although the theme um, for May 17th uh, is innovation and innovating with, with ICTs. We also have a number of themes that we will be celebrating uh, each month. And so we look forward to all of you joining us in those celebrations next year. But also, um, next year is really important for two uh, major processes. One I mentioned before, uh, WISIS plus 10. And the other one, and Yanis, I believe you referred to this this morning, uh, it's the end of the MDGs and the beginning of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And what we need to do is to make sure that those two uh, major global development agendas come together. Uh, and so we're very much looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, not just for WISIS Plus 10, but also for the sustainable uh, development process. Today, uh, for those of you that are aware, uh, what's on the table are some 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, if you look at those 17 goals, there are four references, only four, to ICTs. Uh, we need to work together to make sure that those references uh, that talk about the important role that information and communication technologies have to play uh, in the sustainable development agenda. We need to make sure that those references stay there. Uh, and even better yet, if we have more references, because we all know that, um, that ICTs are key enablers uh, for the sustainable development process. So we do look forward to the year ahead with, with great optimism and, uh, and hope that we can count on all of you uh, to make sure that the post-2015 WISIS process and the post-2015 uh, development agenda process do come together. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Doreen, for this uh, exhaustive presentation, and uh, congratulations on, I would qualify, easy sail during the, uh, uh, the plenipotentiary conference on discussions on these highly sensitive topics. So, good good outcome. Um, I, of course, I would wish to know how much the uh, knowledge that government experts acquired during the IGF meetings contributed to the 
a very positive outcome of ITU plenipotentiary conference, but that most probably history will tell us. So um, now I would go to the next uh, presentation, and since we do not have an, uh, Nora Abusita among us, but she is uh, uh, waiting uh, from her office. Maybe if you would, if you don't mind, I would ask uh, Nora now to step in, and uh, we would advance the presentation of uh, ICANN CGI VEF initiative, um, and uh, we would we would hear from Nora, uh, and also we would hear uh, from uh, Flavio Wagner, representative of CGI. Uh, uh, presentation on this initiative. Nora, if you hear, hear us and uh, ready to speak, uh, the microphone is yours now. Okay, well, well then we're looking for Nora. Let us move then to the next uh, presenter as she's in. Okay, Nora, do you? Yes, I apologize. Okay. So please, the microphone is yours. Thank you. Uh, many thanks to all of you for inviting me to give you a very quick update on the Net Mondial initiative. Um, as a part of the Secretariat, I'm uh, very honored to be uh, with you today. Uh, I will give you a very quick overview of the initiative itself and then uh, I'll spend a couple of minutes on the, the latest uh, developments. Uh, as you all know, uh, as a follow-up to the Net Mondial Sao Paulo meeting, uh, CGI.br, ICANN and the WEF worked together to enable a platform that energizes bottom-up collaborative solutions towards a distributed internet governance ecosystem. Uh, this platform supports and enables the identification of collaborative solutions uh, that uh, address existing and emerging issues. Um, the platform is designed to contribute to the improvement of existing internet governance framework. It will focus on solution mapping and solution formulation, specifically for non-technical internet issues. Uh, this is an online platform, as you all know. It was launched on the 6th of November, and uh, currently the process is very iterative. Uh, the Secretariat's work is being overseen by a transitional committee that will be dissolved as soon as the uh, Coordination Council is established. The composition of the uh, uh, Council is really very representative uh, geographically and sector. Uh, I think it's very important to note here that uh, in order to affect the outcomes of this platform, participation is extremely important. Uh, most recently, there was a meeting of the Transitional Committee that really reflected uh, taking in feedback from community, whether from social media platform or from, uh, over, uh, from analyzing some of the comments that were submitted on, uh, uh, on the Net Mondial website and other areas and some changes were made to reflect those, uh, those suggestions. For example, uh, the five suggested permanent seats from the council that were originally announced are now removed. Uh, the council seats will be open to, to uh, as I said, to all geographies and to all sectors. Um, I'm happy to take any questions later. Um, so cool. let me know if you want me to stick around or if you want to ask the questions now. So thank, thank you, Nora. Now let me first uh, uh, invite uh, Flavio Wagner from C, uh, CGI to uh, take the floor. And then, exceptionally, since you are uh, participating remotely, we will uh, take questions on this particular issue, if, if, if there will be any, uh, before moving to the next items. Uh, Flavio, please, you have the floor. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, the CGIBR, uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, was one of the uh, entities uh, proposing this uh, Net Mundial Initiative platform, uh, has been approached by many uh, stakeholder groups in the last uh, days or weeks, uh, asking for clarification about the platform. Uh, as Nora explained, this 
is still something uh, going on, so there are no uh, final decisions on, on nothing. In fact, it's uh, open to contributions from the, the whole community. And because of this uh, situation that things are still moving on and still being defined, uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, uh, in, in um, its last meeting, uh, last Friday, decided to approve uh, a, a clarification a statement that will be made public uh, maybe today, but that I will read for you already now. It has been approved by all uh, board members of CGIBR. So, uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, CGIBR, in a meeting in November 28, uh, 2014, at its headquarters in Sao Paulo, while fully subscribing to the last public note on the Net Mundial Initiative prepared by its working group on Internet Governance as available in its uh, website, decided to provide these additional clarifications in view of the starting of preparations for the 10th edition of the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, f first, the Net Mundial Initiative aims to provide a platform for presentation and discussion of proposals and ideas that contribute to personalize the multi-stakeholder Net Mundial Declaration, adopted at the end of the event with the same name in April uh, 2014, available on its perspective uh, website. Uh, uh, second, on one hand, adherence to the principles for Internet governance contained at the Mundial, at Net Mundial Declaration is a requirement for the submission of proposals and ideas in the context of the Net Mundial Initiative. Third, uh, on the other hand, proposals and ideas to be presented should consider the roadmap for the future evolution of Internet governance, also part of the Net Mundial Declaration, which recognizes the need to advance the governance of the Internet in various fora and processes, existing or under discussion, for the treatment of topics related to the Internet, bearing in mind the different roles and responsibilities of the various stakeholders. Fourth, the Net Mundial Initiative is not intended to replace the existing or to be established Internet governance fora and processes, such as ICANN, IGF, any new fora on enhanced cooperation and on forwarding issues such as cybercrime and cybersecurity, among others. Fifth, working groups and spaces for discussion that may be created under the Net Mundial Initiative will not have decision-making power over issues being discussed, nor will they constitute mechanisms for implementation of the proposed solutions, which should, as appropriate, be referred and remitted to proper fora and processes. Sixth, in particular, the Net Mundial Initiative does not intend to overlap with the IGF. IGF's role to serve as a focal point for the global Internet community in terms of the tasks set by the Tunis agenda must be preserved. However, nothing prevents any concrete actions conceived within the Net Mundial Initiative to be taken further in discussions at the IGF, to be forwarded to the IGF or to dialogue with the IGF at any time. On the contrary, the Net Mundial Initiative, by allowing the working multi-stakeholder format on specific issues, in line with the discussions in the IGF, may serve to strengthen the IGF, providing continuity and practicality to the discussions in the IGF realm. Seventh, any questions or proposed solutions involving the government sector, such as cybercrime, for example, must necessarily be brought to the attention of national governments and or be channeled to existing or planned international processes. This procedure is consistent with the provisions of the Net Mundial Declaration, which recognizes that certain issues require international treatment, taking into account the role and responsibility of governments on specific topics related to their sovereignty, but at the same time reaffirms the need, even in these cases, that the discussions take place in a multi-stakeholder format. Eight, when selecting the members who will compose the Coordination Council of the Net Mundial Initiative, the Transitional Council will be guided by consensus within each community. Um, ninth, there will be no permanent seats in the Coordination Council for the initiators of the Net Mundial Initiative, ICANN and CGIBR, with the support of the World Economic Forum. Once installed, the Coordination Council will establish modalities for the selection of future members by consensus. From its second term, Every member should also go through a selection and validation process by the global multi-stakeholder community. It will be the task of the Coordination Council to ensure funding sources for further development of the initiative. Ten, the initiators of the proposals, and in particular CGIBR, have been sensitive to the concerns and criticisms raised by members of the Internet community. 
Several modifications have been already introduced in relation to the proposal of the Net Mondial Initiative originally drafted. And other, cha other changes are likely to be made to ensure that the initiative is structured so as to ensure the participation and involvement of all from the beginning. And 11, and last point, many questions and concerns that have been expressed should be mitigated on the basis of proposals and concrete ideas and of the confirmation as appropriate of working groups and specific discuss discussion fora. This will then demonstrate that the Net Mundial Initiative intends to operate simply as a bridge between participants who have concrete proposals and ideas and others who are willing to contribute with expertise, funding, or other forms of contribution to achieve these proposals and ideas. The initiators of the Net Mondial Initiative will not have power to intervene in the development of such proposals and ideas, and once formed, the Coordination Council will serve as a facilitator, also without power to intervene on any initiatives. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. So thank you very much, uh, Flavio. Now we have heard uh, two presentations from uh, uh, two proponents of, of the idea, and uh, I would like now to open the uh, microphone for questions, not for comments at the moment. If you have any questions, either to Nora, who is following uh, this discussion uh, from her office, or uh, to Flavio, it would be time to ask. And I while waiting if there are any questions. My, my, my question, Nora, would be, if, if I understood correctly, so that there are no permanent seats in the Council, and uh, the question which was uh, uh, asked to uh, IGF MAG uh, is also now off the table. Am I right? Thank you, Yanis. Uh, the invitation for, to the MAG to uh, uh, join the Coordination Council, of course, still holds uh, the participation of the IGF um, in the Net Mondial Initiative is critical. Um, and so I hope uh, the fact that uh, there's no more permanent seats is not an indication that uh, the invitation is no longer on the table, on the contrary. Uh, so I do hope that the MAG is, is still considering uh, participation in the Coordination Council. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, the word permanent uh, was removed was really a reflection of community feedback. Uh, the first year we will have these seats, and as uh, Flavio mentioned, uh, um, there on after, uh, all the members of the council will have to go through the same process to secure their membership. Uh, thank you for this clarification. It's crystal clear. The uh, modalities or suggested modalities for the Council sh uh, most probably could be found on, on the website. Uh, and I have a, a Netherlands uh, for the question. Thank you, Chair. Just a question for clarification. Um, as we all know, the Ilvis panel um, started its work uh, and finalized it in Dubai, where um, the World Economic Forum uh, was hosting this, this event. Then um, uh, the gavel was followed by the Commission Build. Uh, the Commission Build was, as well know, launched during the uh, annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. My question is, how does this initiative link is there any linkage with the, between the, the, this initiative and the work of the uh, Commission built, which we all know will last for two years? Thank you. So thank you, Arnold, for question. Any further questions? There is uh, Ginger, yourself, please. Uh, my question is for Flavio. I, um, it's referencing that the Net Mundial Initiative will be guided by stakeholder group recommendations for the Coordination Council. I'm, I would like to ask who will make the final decisions then if you're going to be guided by the stakeholder recommendations. Thank you. So thank you. Marilyn Cade. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. My question, I think, will probably go to both uh, Nora and also Flavio. 
taking note of um, comments that seem to continue to be made of uh, we seek not to compete to but to support the IGF. I think it's a little unclear to me personally uh, since all resources are uh, finite, such as human resources, financial resources, time resources, et cetera. Um, I'd like to hear more about how this initiative is going to contribute to, particularly in support of financial contributions to the IGF. The IGF is um, um, is at a critical stage, and having been a member of the CSTD Working Group on Improvements to the IGF, and also on the CSTD Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation, and participating actively in ICANN and in a number of other fora, I'm particularly aware of the need for uh, significant financial resources for the IGF to be able to broaden and deepen the active, informed participation from all stakeholders from developing countries. So I hear that this is an initiative that is complementary. I'd like to hear more about the tangible financial contributions to strengthen the IGF. Thank you. So thank you, and I will take uh, the question from remote participant and before going to Nora and to Flavia. Do okay, I will read it from Subi. Net Mundial was bottom up. It was about stakeholders coming together and voluntarily associating to discuss and evolve a future roadmap for global IG. While in the new Net Mundial WEF initiative, we need to adhere to the principles and propagate them too. Sui, I'm not um, hearing a question there. Okay, thank you. Oh. Uh, Nora, please, could you, uh, could you elaborate on those questions that have been asked so far? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, on the first uh, point, uh, which is the relationship of the built uh, commission to the Net Mundial initiative, uh, I think both uh, the two serve uh, d different goals. Um, the Net Mundial initiative will take into account any work that's being done on internet governance. Um, and so we are, uh, uh, we have been and we will be in constant uh, coordination with the built commission. Uh, regarding Marilyn Kate's uh, comments on uh, uh, the, the plans to support the IGF uh, from a Net Mundial initiative uh, standpoint, uh, any details uh, so to take it a few steps back? The Net Mundial initiative is very committed to the IGF, uh, so there's no question there. Uh, what resources, what support will go into the IGF is something for the uh, Coordination Council uh, to decide on. As I had mentioned before, the Council will be fully representative uh, geographically and sector-wise, and as soon as they meet, they will discuss many things uh, ha having to do with detail details, one of which is how to support the IGF. The more participation there is in the Council, the more there is a guarantee of these issues uh, coming to, uh, uh, to, to the Council's attention. Thank you. So thank you, Nora. Flavia, would you like to respond, or we, we, maybe we can we can wait until until the discussion. Uh, Fat, Fatima has a question. Yes, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. My question is for Nora, and. Is, uh, is ICANN staff or ICANN a corporation going to have a consultation with the ICANN community about the involvement in, involvement in the Net Mundial Initiative? Thank you. So thank you. Any other questions? Uh, there is uh, one uh, from Subi. Finally, question? No? Okay, so something else? Please. Henriette. Uh, from APC asked me to clarify 
As a member of the BUILD Commission, properly known as the Global Commission on Internet Governance, I can share that it is in completely independent from the Net Mundial Initiative or any other Internet Governance form or platform. It is currently completing research on the topic of Internet fragmentation and Internet governance and will re release a report in the course of 2015. So thank you. Anna, Anna Neresh, question? Uh, thank you very much. And I uh, would like to thank to, uh, to both of you that uh, uh, tried to explain what this Net Mundial initiative is. Unfortunately, I, I didn't understand. So, uh, but it, it should be my fault. So I'm, I'm trying to, to see how it fits in all this ecosystem uh, and to make it uh, something with uh, some added value. So, um, because I'm a bit afraid that to, uh, today we have this council and tomorrow we'll have a very complex governance system in this Net Mundial Initiative, uh, because we know that uh, the, the World Economic Forum and ICANN, that is uh, no more, uh, so we, we don't speak about ICANN uh, anymore, but uh, we all know that ICANN is, uh, is really related with, which is not a bad thing, of course, but it's, it's something that is part of this uh, ecosystem. And as uh, Marilyn said, we have uh, a lack of resources and they are finite. So uh, my point is, and uh, uh, sorry if I'm being very naive, uh, if uh, this point should not be uh, discussed um, at the IGF 2015 as one of the main sessions, um, and to think uh, how to, to put this into the ecosystem and not another thing, but to integrate it. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. In other words, uh, Nora, the question is how uh, a Net Mondial initiative contributes, what value that adds to existing uh, mechanisms. There is another question and then, then that's, that will be over. Uh, another question from remote participant. Uh, this is the question that Subi was formulating. She asks that Flavio uh, respond. She says, sorry, how do we evolve stakeholder consensus if we need to adhere to the principles and first buy into the principles and evolve them? She says it's a little bit like, like putting the cart before the horse. Okay, Flavio, you, will, you, will, you now have a time to reflect on that. Uh, we're going back to Nora. If, Nora, if you would like to answer. Uh, questions. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, to Fatima's question about uh, an ICANN public consultation, uh, I'd like to point out that ICANN is one of the enablers of uh, of the Net Mondial Initiative. Every uh, uh, entity that is involved has uh, donated the time of a staff member uh, to be part of the secretariat. Um, uh, we do intend to update our community uh, in the upcoming Singapore meeting, uh, but no public consultation is planned as of yet. Uh, the other important uh, point to note to all of you here is that on uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday, there will be an open call for the community. Uh, it's a Q&A session with uh, the three uh, organizations uh, that basically will allow you to ask any questions and get uh, more uh, detailed information from the transitional committee. Uh, the details of those will be on the Net Mondial website. Um, uh, now, uh, how does the uh, Net Mondial initiative fit into the ecosystem? It is yet another um, uh, initiative that complements existing efforts. Uh, it's not here to replace any of them. It's not here to take over any of them. Uh, it is really another uh, way of, of complementing the existing uh, uh, initiatives. 
Now, uh, we do understand the point about uh, the resources being limited. Uh, what this initiative is doing is bringing new players uh, into, uh, into the mix. And so the involvement of, of the World Economic Forum um, and the, the, the link between uh, the Net Mondial Initiative and uh, other initiatives such as the WEF Initiative in Davos on Internet Governance will really open up the discussion and bring in more, um, more contributors than we've uh, um, classically seen. Thank, thank you very much, Nora. Uh, if you can uh, stay on, uh, please do. If you need to leave, uh, thank you for your contribution to, to, these, um, uh, to this discussion. And uh, we will continue with other presentations and we'll, <coughs> and we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back uh, after other presentations. So thank you, Nora, for that. Uh, Flavio, now the floor is yours. Yeah, I think I, I owe two uh, uh, answers. One is to Ginger, I think, about the, the, the choice of the uh, seats uh, for the Coordination Council. For instance, with civil society, the Transitional Council, which has one representative from each of the three uh, entities proposing the initiative, is uh, uh, working together with the uh, coordination, uh, civil society coordination group, CSCG, yeah, to uh, come together with a list of uh, names that are uh, uh, a consensus uh, from CSCG. So, so the, the transitional council will not try to impose any names. The, the, there is a website where uh, uh, candidates for those seats uh, self-nominate them or can be nominated by entities. And from this list, uh, from this uh, pool of names that have been nominated, CSCG will propose names that uh, consider regional diversity. And then this will be uh, decided together with the Transitional Council. So Transitional Council will not decide by itself. Uh, and uh, uh, an answer to, to Subi, uh, yes, Net Mundial was bottom up, and uh, as one of the outcomes of the event in Sao Paulo, there was a, a declaration that was approved by a rough consensus uh, among the, the participants from all stakeholder groups. And uh, unless the community itself decides on the contrary and wants to reopen the discussion on the uh, principles for internet governance that have been uh, proposed and accepted by rough consensus in Sao Paulo. So, uh, we see no reason uh, to reopen the discussion of this mo at this moment. Of course, there are many uh, processes and fora for uh, discussion of internet governance. The main one is IGF, of course. If IGF, for instance, in uh, its net next uh, uh, meeting in, in, in João Pessoa in Brazil decides to take uh, Although uh, IGF is not uh, recommending things, but if it try one uh, dynamic coalition or groups inside IGF propose some amendments or evolution of the principles in Sao Paulo, of course, we, everybody will be happy to see this evolution. But for the moment, the principles we have are those. And they have been decided with all uh, segments of, of the community. So we think it's a good starting point for uh, uh, accepting proposals in this initiative that these uh, are adherent to the principles that have been defined uh, in Sao Paulo. So thank you very much. Um, I see that there are other requests for the floor, but the thing that we uh, opened up for questions was simply because Nora is not here, not to keep her on the phone all the time. So what I would like to suggest that maybe we proceed with other presentations and then uh, four requests for the floor, uh, Cheryl, Virat, ICC Bases, and Cisco. We will take immediately as the first four que uh, questions or comments uh, in, in the subsequent discussion. Would, you, would that be agreeable? Thank you. Now then, uh, let us move to uh, next presentation. That is uh, uh, Commission Science and Technology for Development WSIS plus 10 uh, review. Uh, presentation will be made by Ms. Mervi Kultema, WSIS coordinator from uh, Division on Technology and Logistics of UNCTAD. Mervi, floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Yanis. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today to represent uh, CSTD and, and UNCTAD. As many of you know, um, I'm a former MAG member, and it's nice to see so many familiar faces here today. Um, I will begin uh, by quick review of the ECOSOC uh, resolution which mandated the CSTD to conduct uh, its 10-year review, and then I will present the work that the Secretariat has done to collect inputs from all stakeholders for the review. I will then talk a little about um, the draft 10-year uh, review report that the Secretariat has made available for the CSTD. And uh, finally, um, I will uh, brief you on the way forward uh, on the review and the discussion that took place um, last week uh, in the CSTD intersessional panel on, on this issue. Um, can you go uh, to the next slide, please? And two after that? <laughs> yes, we are now in the right place. Um, so to start with the mandate, um, in 2013, and again this year, the ECOSOC asked the CSTD to make a particular contribution to the WISI's follow-up, and basically uh, it made three requests uh, to the Commission. First, it requested the Commission to collect inputs uh, from member states and all stakeholders uh, for the review. Second, it requested the Commission to organize a substantive discussion on the review report uh, in 2013. And this substantive discussion will take place at the Commission's 18th session, which convenes from 4 to 8 May 2015. And the third task that the Council gave to the CSTD uh, was to report through the Council to the General Assembly as it makes an overall review of the implementation of, of WISI's outcomes in 2015. Uh, next slide, please. I will just briefly explain what uh, the Secretariat uh, has done uh, to facilitate the Commission in this task. So between June and October 2014, we conducted an open invitation to all stakeholders to share their views and experiences on the implementation of WISIS outcomes. And I would like to thank those who submitted their contribution. In total, we received 96 contributions, which is a very good outcome and they are available on the CSTD uh, website, with the exception of those who indicated that they didn't want their submission to, to be in public. Um, and also, in order to reach stakeholders from different regions and sectors, the Secretariat organized seven open consultation sessions in different uh, parts of the world. Um, two of them took place during the uh, IGF meeting in Istanbul. One was a pre-event uh, that we organized for Latin American region, and another one was an open forum for all IGF participants, and I would like to thank the, the IGF secretariat uh, for collaborating with us uh, on this review. Uh, yes, and of course, uh, we need to take into account all related outcomes and inputs, such as the WISIS Plus 10 high-level event, uh, UNESCO's uh, WISIS Plus 10 review meeting, and Partnership on Measuring ICT for Development report. So these have been taken into account as the Secretariat has uh, prepared uh, the 10-year review report, and, and hopefully the Commission will also uh, look at this uh, when it makes its uh, review in 2015. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the information that we have gathered, both by the uh, open consultation and, and through the analysis of relevant literature, um, has allowed us to prepare uh, the draft 10-year review report. Um, the purpose of this document is to provide a comprehensive summary of evidence concerning WISIS outcomes and the development of an information society since the conclusion of the World Summit in 2015. You have the draft version of that re report available on the CSTD website, and it was discussed uh, last week uh, in the CSTD in the sessional panel, um, as, I, uh, as I just uh, referred to. Uh, we will still, it's still a draft version, and we, and we will prepare an executive summary to it, uh, and, uh, and then we will finalize it uh, to the 18th uh, session of the Commission. But at this 
uh, stage, I would like to point out that it is the Secretariat's uh, review report and, and the Commission will make uh, its own uh, review in, in the annual session. Next slide, please. So this is uh, basically the structure of, of the report with its age chapters and, and an annex on, on multi-stakeholder implementation. Next, please. Uh, here are some of the key points which are made in the report in terms of the most important changes which have taken place in, in ICT since uh, WISIS. And one common nominator of these say, changes which un underpins everything is really the Internet and, and its sent, uh, role uh, in the information society today as well as its technological uh, progress. Um, it is important for international policy and programs concerned with the future implementation of WISIS outcomes to be located in this through rough understanding of the current circumstances, opportunities and challenges and that's why we decided to uh, devote a whole um, chapter to these changes in, in the review report. Next slide please. Now, um, here are some of the achievements that we have seen in, in the ICT uh, sector uh, from 2005 onwards. Um, I won't go uh, to the details, but these are all uh, reflected more in detail uh, in the report. Next slide, please. Now, talking about achievements in, in the WISIS uh, implementation, I would perhaps highlight two issues uh, today. One is the multi-stakeholder cooperation, which has really become established as a key part of both ICT and ICT4D agendas. Um, it was strongly advocated in the WISIS outcome documents and um, and uh, especially in, in the IGF uh, part of, of the outcomes, uh, the action lines and the WISIS for, forum, um, all of these have fostered uh, the multi-stakeholder participation. And then uh, the final point in my presentation, um, the report discusses the IGF as, as one of the main achievements in, in the WISIS uh, implementation. This was clearly this came clearly out in, in the submissions that, that we had um, from different uh, stakeholders. So the report revisits the mandate of the IGF, lists the, the IGF meetings that have taken place and, and notes the outcomes of the CSTD working group on the improvements to the IGF. Um, for example, uh, UN DESA commented uh, in its submission that the IGF has matured over the years now routinely discussing issues which were once considered too controversial for multi-stakeholder cooperation, such as critical internet resources and, and human rights. So we note some of these uh, inputs in the report, but also the fact that there were all, some more critical voices of IGS performance um, among the contributors, but these were, of course, in, in minority. As an overall observation, the report concludes uh, that the IGF has become an important annual event uh, in the ICT and Internet calendars, with strong support from across stakeholder communities. Uh, next, please. <coughs> Uh, the report uh, identified uh, four major, major challenges and perhaps I would like to point out one that Doreen uh, pointed out earlier that we are still learning the best ways to mainstream ICTs into development. I mean, this is particularly crucial because ICTs will become increasingly capable and increasingly important in the future. And, Many contributors to the consultation for the review expressed concern about the need uh, for more attention to be paid to the information society in the post-2015 development agenda. And this is also something that uh, the Commission deliberated uh, last week. How do we get ICTs uh, mainstreamed in, in the sustainable uh, development goals and in that uh, post-2015 uh, development uh, process. 
Uh, next slide, please. Um, now, we also made some suggestions um, that emerge from the evidence in the report and in contributions to the consultations. Uh, the need for any targets concerned with this implementation to be forward-looking and measurable, uh, improvements in data gathering and, and analysis, uh, ensure that action lines cover new developments that have taken place uh, since WISIS pay more attention to the gender dimension, for example. Uh, the need for WISIS outcomes to be better integrated into United Nations development assistance frameworks and uh, also strengthening the work of uh, ANGIS. Uh, also, need uh, uh, for more attention to financial uh, mechanisms and uh, one that may interest you is, is the need to resolve differences of opinion and achieve consensus on the future of Internet governance. I don't know if this is too optimistic as, as a goal, but it would certainly take us uh, forward. And also the need to build on the body of experience that has emerged from the work of diverse stakeholders and multi-stakeholder cooperation in order to improve the effectiveness of future action to implement with these outcomes. Um, and these are really some of the suggestions that we want to put forward for the Commission as it, as it makes its review in, in the annual session next year. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned um, in the intersessional panel uh, next, la last week, uh, one whole day was devoted to the discussion on the 10-year on the review. Uh, that was Friday. Uh, we had the presidents of the two phases of the summit who gave us uh, their views. Thank you, Yanis, for, for being there with us. Um, and we had a lively di discussion on the draft report and, and on the 10-year review in, in general. Um, the Secretariat got the feeling that there was a general um, satisfaction in the content of, of our review uh, report, even though there were a number of comments that were made for further adjust adjustments such as addendums, deletions, or making the rep report more balanced so that different options could be reflected. Uh, this uh, applied particularly to, to the enhanced cooperation part of the text, which we uh, knew would be perhaps uh, most discussed. And um, we gave a two-week uh, period uh, to send comments in writing. Uh, if you have any comments on the draft re review report, which is made available uh, on the CSTD, website, I would encourage you to, to uh, send uh, them to us in writing. You can see the, um, the e uh, email address uh, on the screen. Next slide, please. And finally, the Commission discussed the way forward with the report and, and with the 10-year review. So. The report is going to be finalized by the Secretariat after this two-week uh, period has uh, concluded, and it will be submitted as final uh, publication to the 18th annual session. Actually, we have to finalize the report already in mid-January for it to be uh, made available as a final publication uh, in May. Uh, so it will uh, be uh, an information document for the Commission as it makes its own 10-year review report uh, or 10-year review during the annual session. And the outcome of that review, whichever format it takes, will then be submitted through the ECOSOC to the General Assembly. And uh, it will constitute an input from the CSTD 10-year, uh, from the CSTD uh, that to the General Assembly as it carries out uh, the overall review of WISIS outcomes uh, around December uh, 2015. Um, uh, well, with that, um, I will hand it back to the Chair and I'm available for any questions that or comments that may arise. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you very much, Mary, for this presentation. And, and I think we will go through all presentations, and then we will uh, do the uh, Q&A session on all, all uh, uh, five of those presentations. So let me now turn uh, to the next uh, speaker, and that, that is uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Major. Uh, he's a special advisor of the Permanent Mission of Hungary to the United Nations, and he is the chair, chairman of the Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation. And we would like to hear from him a brief report on the outcome, outcomes of this uh, working group. Peter, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yanis. It's really nice to be here back in the ITU, uh, which I used to work for 23 years. Uh, Yanis, you mentioned that uh, uh, I was, or I'm the chair of the Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation, and probably many of us don't even have a clue what Enhanced Cooperation is. Uh, I think you are the best person to clarify it. If not, well, eventually give some background, but I, I spare you from that. So enhanced cooperation uh, just popped up in the Tunis agenda, which you know, I think, all of you by heart. Uh, in most IGF, uh, internet governance related meetings, uh, participants usually quote eventually by heart or usually take the booklet and quote the appropriate paragraphs, what they think is appropriate. And in particular, with regards to enhanced cooperation, it's paragraph 69, which says, we further recognize the need for enhanced cooperation in the future to enable governments on an equal footing to carry out their roles and responsibilities in international public policy issues pertaining to the internet but not in the day-to-day -day technical and operational matters. So that is one of the key paragraphs. And of course, uh, the other one is the process towards enhanced cooperation to be started by the UN Secretary General involving all relevant organization by the end of first quarter of 2006. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we are in 2014. Uh, well, uh, I don't want to imply that nothing happened because it wouldn't be right. So uh, after some hesitation and some really interesting consultations within the UN, within the Commission on Science and Technology for Development, the United Nations General Assembly, by the end of 2012, uh, in its resolution, invited the chair of the Commission of Science and Technology for Development to establish a working group on enhanced cooperation to examine the mandate of the visits regarding enhanced cooperation. Through seeking, compiling, and reviewing inputs from all member states and all other stakeholders, and to make recommendations on how to fully implement this mandate. And this group was to report on the 17th session of the CSTD. Uh, the resolution is usual UN language, very well balanced. Uh, what is important to note from that, that it is a multi-stakeholder working group within the UN system. So the process itself, after the resolution, the CSCD uh, created the working group in consultation with the appropriate stakeholder groups who nominated their uh, participants in the working group. And uh, basically, the working group was established uh, similarly to the previous one, which was already mentioned uh, during many occasions, that is the working group on, on the improvements to the IGF. This multi-stakeholder working group uh, had uh, uh, 46 members, I believe, 22 member states and 42 members, 22 member states and five, five representatives from other stakeholder groups. Uh, we tried to work in compliance with the mandate and uh, in a multi-stakeholder approach, a mutual trust, 
try to achieve some results-based consensus. And of course, observers uh, uh, were allowed to attend the meetings, either physically or remotely. So uh, everything seemed to be very bright at the very beginning. We had four physical meetings. Uh, and in the first meeting, we compiled a questionnaire well, usually what you do is you, you just reach out to the stakeholders and you, you come up with a questionnaire asking their opinions related to the particular topic, this time about enhanced cooperation. And this questionnaire was uh, uh, contained about 18 questions. And we received a pretty, good, uh, uh, pretty good responses to the questionnaire. There were, I think, close to 70 uh, contributions and the question was quite lengthy because we had 18 questions. So we evaluated the questions and it turned out that uh, in case we want to have the full compilation we are, have to deal with a, a document of 1,000 pages. I know that you love to read 1,000 pages in, in the, uh, but I am not very sure that this is the most efficient way, so we decided to uh, ask the Secretariat to prepare a, a shorter document, and in the end we came up with a 25-page document, which was uh, kind of manageable. Uh, so after the second meeting, which was, you, which was based on this uh, reduced document, which also encompassed all the essential points, and which is made available on the uh, CSTD website, so you can still go to the website and uh, uh, read it if you feel like. Uh, we found out that we should uh, group the uh, responses into five categories, and uh, we try to manage the five different categories. And of course, uh, one of the most important was the role of the stakeholders. Well, uh, during the meetings, it was found out that uh, uh, the root issue, and by root, I don't mean the internet root, but I, I mean the, the heart of the matter, was the identification of existing mechanisms, uh, global, regional, uh, mechanisms where questions related to enhanced corporations are being dealt with. And based on the re responses to the questionnaire, we managed, uh, uh, well, the working group, uh, first of all, set up a correspondence group. Uh, and there were two volunteers, and I would like to name them, Lea Kaspar, who is a member of the MAG now, and Samantha Dickinson, uh, who volunteered to, uh, to do the data mining from the responses and identify the issues which have bearing to enhanced cooperation. They managed to identify 483 issues, and, uh, and later on this was downsized to 200 plus. Uh, so we had our third and fourth meeting, and then in the end it, it became, as usual, quite political. Uh, the opinions were divergent. Uh, well, some said that nothing happened in the field of enhanced cooperation. Others said that much happened. Uh, well, the basic issue was that eventually a new body needed, is needed to, to deal with the enhanced cooperation. Uh, majority of participants said that no, existing ones are enough. Uh, as for the approach, uh, there were voices that said that eventually multilateral approach should be uh, adopted for treating these issues. Uh, again, the majority was for the multi-stakeholder approach. So basically, uh, for the mapping exercise, it was half empty or half full. So, my assessment of the meetings uh, was that basically we are on the same side, but with different views. We really want to have a stable, secure, and unfragmented internet. Of course, we should sequence uh, the recommendations as to what, how, and who 
is doing things on enhanced cooperation. And of course, recommendations should be implementable, stable, and flexible. So we had a very, very rich uh, 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 responses. We have a very, very uh, valuable documents, but for the lack of time, we didn't manage to finish our work. If you think about it, we had about one year to, to work on that. So compared to the previous eight years, uh, I think we have uh, managed uh, not too bad. So it has already been mentioned that there was a resolution of the ECOSOC. ECOSOC means uh, Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. I know that you love abbreviations and all of you are familiar with all the abbreviations we are saying here, so that's why I'm telling you ECOSOC is Economic and Social Council. And its resolution, the Economic, Economic and Social Council of the UN asked for continuation of the mapping exercise, uh, which was the essence of the work, or one of the main points of the work, and asked the CST, the Secretariat, to continue this work. Uh, the resolution was passed, I think, in July uh, this year. So the Secretariat uh, took the job and uh, organized uh, a peer review team and started the work. Uh, in a two months' time, uh, I believe the Secretariat provided a very, very good report on the results of the mapping exercise. Uh, and this report is made available on the CSTD website again. And alongside with the report, there is a other document which is called a database. To my mind, it's a spreadsheet, uh, but we don't really want to go into technical details. So uh, you are also encouraged to look into that. And the reason for it, that during the intersessional, session, intersessional meeting of the CSTD last week, we had a two and a half hour session on the mapping exercise and there were many, many views announced. And uh, basically I think most of the uh, statements and contributions uh, in the discussions were quite positive about the outcome. Of course there were suggestions how to improve. So I think this is an ideal place to ask for your opinion to contribute. We have uh, allocated about a one month period to comment, and we would like to see your feelings and your, your, your uh, uh, arguments uh, pro and co con for, for the uh, enhanced cooperation issues which have been identified and the mechanisms which have been identified. So uh, the, uh, you can submit your contributions using the UNCTAD uh, uh, email address. Uh, preceded by the WGEC, so it's WGEC at unctad.org. Um, if you didn't have a chance to write it down, um, I will be available and Mervy will be available because I have to pay tribute to her as well because she was coordinating this exercise as well. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it was a very good exercise. It's a very promising one and I believe uh, it will be discussed uh, again during the main session of the CSTD in May. At, and I don't really have to be very, very uh, foresight, uh, have a good foresight to say that eventually it will be passed through the ECOSOC to the United Nations General Assembly for consideration as one of the inputs to its review. With that, I finished my presentation thank you so thank you very much uh, Peter for uh, presentation in indeed this is the, the latter part of your presentation uh, refers to the mapping of international internet public policy issues the question which has been uh, discussed on a number of occasions there have been uh, attempts of drafting that type of list of public policy issues one was done by the working group on internet governance one was done by the ITU Council uh, working group on information society, uh, but it has never been uh, properly 
sort of drilled down uh, and consensus has never been reached on that uh, among governments, not to say that after that uh, of uh, all stakeholders. So hopefully this uh, exercise will bring to uh, better understanding and uh, maybe even a consensus what do we mean by uh, using term uh, international uh, uh, internet public policy issues. So thank you very much, and certainly that, that would contribute to the, uh, to the discussions we're going to hear next. That is VSIS plus 10 review uh, process, uh, which will be organized by United Nations General Assembly. And uh, I would like uh, to invite Ms. Elia Armstrong, the Chief uh, of uh, Division for Public Administration and Development Management from United Nations Department on Economic and Social Affairs uh, to share information that she has about the preparations for that process. Elia, microphone is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very delighted to be here, and I would like to welcome all the new MAG members on behalf of our Under Secretary General, Mr. Wu, and our Assistant Secretary General, um, Mr. Thomas Gass. We in New York at DESA are constantly amazed by the activism and the dedication that the uh, IG community demonstrates, and of course the leadership of, of MAG and uh, the current under the current leadership of uh, the chair, um, Yanis. I, the, the benefit of being the last speaker in a way is that a lot of my work has already been done and I don't really want to bore you with additional details. Um, I think what I want to do is say, you know, in true UN fashion, any sort of major review or uh, major activity usually has sort of a uh, a process side and then there's the substantive side. So maybe I could kind of try to make a few remarks on um, first the process side and then maybe ask some questions about the substantive side. Um, on the process side, uh, as Yanis has mentioned, um, there was a uh, modalities uh, resolution that was passed by the General Assembly in July of this year um, and um, it didn't give a lot of details beyond to say that a high level, at the, a high level meeting will be held in December in New York and that, um, uh, that there should be also um, multi-stakeholder consultations um, prior to that. In the current draft of the ICT for D resolution that is now being discussed before the second committee, there is a paragraph that's saying they are also hoping for an intergovernmentally agreed upon outcome document out of that session. So that sort of highlights the two points that I made, one which is the process issue and then secondly is the substantive issue. So going back on the process issue, if you go up the food chain of the intergovernmental process, if you like, you've heard from um, our UNCTAD colleague about CSTD uh, processes, currently consultations and in the report that they will submit to ECOSOC in July of next year and then in um, that that session will then feed into the GA session. In addition to that, we also know, and we've heard this morning about ITU's own review process, which is review process, and UNESCO's review process as well. So you see sort of multi-track going on in terms of procedures. The high-level review uh, by GA review will also be under the auspices of two presidents of the General Assembly. That is, a lot of the preparatory process is being done by the current president of the General Assembly who is um, from Uganda. And he will be the one to appoint the two facilitators in June of 2015 that will be, you know, starting the negotiations on the outcome document. And then in September that will be taken over by the new PGA of 2015 and so the process will undergo that. This is just to give you sort of an overview of, of the procedural parts. Um, I just want to make sure I don't uh, 
miss out on everything. So what I what my team did last week was that we approached our colleagues in General Assembly um, Department and, and asked them, is it possible to set a date at least? And they said that it will be done within the context of the overall program of the General Assembly work for next year. So it's too early now, but you know it will be set sometime soon. Um, and the there will be two facilitators that will also be appointed by the PGA and that will happen in June of 2015. So you can sort of see a timeline emerging. On the substantive side, um, I just want to take you with me to New York and imagine that this is September 2015. What's going to be going on? There's going to be a lot of discussion about the end of the MDGs and the ushering in of the new post-2015 development agenda with, with the SDGs at the center. And um, Doreen alluded to that, the SDGs and also the mention of the ICTs, you know, um, Around some of the ST, uh, around the some of some of the SDGs, so and we can only anticipate uh, what's already being given in the SGs report to CSTD that will be before ECOSOC. So we are hoping that somehow the two tracks, the discussion of the post 2015 development agenda, will not conclude without a really firm placing of the role of. ICTs and WISIS and of course internet governance um, in all of this and the trick is how to bring the traffic together so that you come out in one car, <laughs> come out of the same tunnel, <laughs> something like that. Um, so getting back to uh, the, the substance side, um, I guess for because I see the richness of the number of issues on internet governance, which is but a subset of, um, of information society, if you like, as a relatively newcomer to this um, substantive area, I've been asking the question, what after WISIS? What does that vision look like? Is it more of information society? Is it a grander part of information society. And I think this is where um, all stakeholders have such an important role to play in trying to crystallize the vision because I think there are many strands. And the more clear and, and earlier consensus that can be achieved on this vision, the greater chance that it will survive through, the, through these various uh, parallel processes um, that will come out uh, at the end of the review. And I think that we mustn't lose sight of the ultimate goal of that review, which is looking at did the uh, objectives of uh, the original WISIS, the, the two summits, were they achieved and where does the international community go from here and how does that vision fit in? How is that part and parcel of the vision of sustainable development? And I think that's just a question that I would hand over to you at this point. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Elia, uh, for this this presentation, of course, there are more questions uh, concerning that part than, than answers. The uh, question is what will be modalities of negotiations most probably will be defined by co-facilitators after their nomination. Uh, question who will be servicing that process, most likely that would be uh, UN DESA uh, as uh, you are well placed, strategically placed in New York. And uh, it would be difficult for any Geneva-based organization to, uh, to do the job. And as well as what will be the modalities of negotiations and how the uh, interaction, which is suggested by the UNGA resolution with other stakeholders, will be organized. So, of course, these are questions that we still need to uh, uh, look answers for. Uh, nevertheless, thank you very much for these presentations of the processes. Uh, that will, uh, in one way or another, directly or indirectly, impact the preparations for the IGF uh, Brazil. And now uh, I would like to open the uh, floor for any comments, uh, questions uh, in relation to all five presentations. And as I uh, promised, that uh, first would be uh, four uh, uh, requests uh, in order uh, following order, Virat, ICC basis, Cheryl, and then Chip. 
Virat is absent. We're taking next one ICC basis, please. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I, I just my question is going back to the um, discussion we had uh, earlier before the uh, most recent presentations on the Net Mondial initiative. Um, ICC basis has submitted a letter to the um, transitional council with a, a, a long list of detailed questions and uh, in particular those questions are, are, are addressing issues around the difficulties uh, of practically participating for some uh, stakeholders and, and uh, individuals. And so uh, while we are really um, pleased to hear the comment um, that Flavio has made that the initiative remains open to other changes and likely to be made, uh, um, these are likely to evolve and the initiative um, will aim to ensure that participation is, is possible from all. Uh, we were wondering about what uh, the next steps were and when we might um, be able to have uh, some re detailed responses to these questions because they are, are quite extensive. We noted in, in, in one case uh, that that question was addressed, but for the rest of them, we'd like to know. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Uh, I think that I would suggest that we collect all the questions and then uh, I, would, I will ask uh, all presenters to uh, respond to all, all of them at the same time. Uh, Virat, please. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, thank you and congratulations to all the presenters and um, outstanding um, summaries of the discussions and the importance as it links back to the internet governance. In fact, the last IGF, as you're aware, held a main session uh, in the linkages, and I hope we can do more work there. Specifically with regards to the um, initiative-related discussions, um, there are some threshold-related issues for stakeholders uh, because of the preconditions that are included in joining the um, coordination council and that flows those uh, preconditions then flows to organizations as it is currently worded um, in terms of embracement and so if we can get clear responses to some of the issues that uh, business has raised through ICC basis and that will certainly help as early as possible to understand how to proceed because there are not just uh, procedural issues but also legal implications on how people can associate themselves with them as a group because of the language that's currently on the on the on the website um, the more important point which maybe you could respond right now uh, would be that while clearly net mundial principles came out of an excellent uh, process and in recognition of which the IGF itself gave it the pride of honor the the there are stakeholders who accept or may accept Net Mundial principle uh, fully, partially, and some not at all, which is, which is a likelihood. Um, but if the precondition exists the way it is, then it would mean that even though we call the process open, several large numbers of stakeholders, including um, governments, may not be able to join this discussion to begin with because they are not in a position to fully embrace everything that's out there. There is a difference between uh, non-binding rough consensus and embrace, accept, advocate. There's a big difference. How do you then start a process where right at the beginning you would have a realization that large number of stakeholders due to legal or other issues may not be able to contribute even though their presence in what you're trying to look for, which is solutions for specific problems, may be a critical need for the initiative to succeed. Thank you very much. Cheryl? Thank you very much, and thank you again to all the panelists. It was very substantive, all of the presentations, and very informative and, and very useful. Um, my question are, are geared towards the Net Mundial Initiative presentation, and Verizon did participate in Net Mundial. We thought it was uh, a very forward-looking um, and excellent two-day conference, uh, and some good things definitely came out of it. Um, with respect to just 
I think clarifying a couple of uh, items that I heard in the presentation. I noted that uh, there was a discussion of the, the WEF um, initiative on internet governance, um, and th there's also the Net Mundial initiative. Um, are these separate or are these uh, the same? I just, just to clarify that um, so we're on the same page. Also, um, secondly, I heard that uh, the principles, uh, there could be a possibility of them changing in the future, whether through perhaps a process at the IGF, such as Dynamic Coalition or otherwise. Um, just, I know we're not there yet, but if that were to occur, how would uh, individuals or organizations who have signed on to the principles as they were moving forward, would it be assumed that they adopt the new ones or would they need to readopt or would they, you know, would it be recognized in some way that they had adopt the old, adopted the old ones and just what would that process be and what would it look like? And then third, I think there was uh, an interesting comment with respect to resources at the IGF. Uh, we've all been talking about what an important year 2015 is going to be um, and we had s some interesting discussion actually in the donors meeting today with respect to resources, time constraints, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure if, if the seat is definitely a MAG seat or if it's an overall IGF seat or so clarification on that. Um, and then just I would highlight also, uh, you know, just the concern that if we are taking on intercessional work, um, we are doing the best practice forums. I don't know that we've decided um, the exact role of the MAG chair and secretariat's office in terms of who will be doing what, um, but just making sure that the, we're not overextending our resources in such a critical year. Um, and so those are my comments on Net Mundial Initiative. I had one comment also on um, the CSTD process. Um, we try very hard to participate in as many of the meetings as we can, but sometimes due to resource constraints, we're not able to. Um, and so I did participate remotely. Um, in one of the CSTD meetings, and I thought it was great. Um, it, it was very easy to do so, and I really appreciated that. I think moving forward, really enhancing uh, remote participation capabilities for all the meetings will be increasingly important, uh, especially as we add new things and, and, and different organizations have different levels of resources. So thank you very much, and I'm sorry for so, too many questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cheryl. Next uh, is uh, uh, Chip from Cisco Systems. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank the presenters for giving us a nice update on what is happening in the other areas of internet governance in the uh, UN system. Uh, one question, I think I, I think the previous speakers you know, asked most of my questions, but I would just maybe ask a request rather than a a question is that perhaps in as we get closer to June and if there is a meeting a mag or meeting in uh, May that we get another update on uh, what the process is for the 10-year review at that time thank you the uh, question on the schedule for preparations uh, to uh, Brazil meeting we will be discussing tomorrow and day after and then we will decide what will be the sequence of MAG meeting, but certainly your request is uh, taken on board and we will update at every occasion on, on the VSIS plus 10 uh, review. Do we have a remote participation? Participants, two of them, please. Yes, first, uh, just very quickly before Nora had to leave, she asked, she left the note that there will be a call on Thursday to ask any more questions regarding the Net Mundial Initiative at 5 UTC. And then we have a comment from Subi. This is Subi, and I'm not going to try and say her last name. Chat ready. For all the initiative presenters, many thanks, excellent summaries all. I speak for myself and for those not in the room. For many new voices and participants willing to engage, we welcome the various new initiatives existing and new. Wish that a 1,000 flowers bloom. The challenge has been to keep track of the various initiatives. Would request UNDESA perhaps through the IGF to integrate a global IG events initiatives map and also if we could get a specific response to the IG extension mandate position from DESA 
what we as MAG members can do to carry this message forward on the value of the IDF. The clock is ticking and we have now just under one year. Thank you. So thank you. As far as I know, the map, map holder is uh, Marilyn. So she always has this nice <laughs> map of all meetings related to IGF. So, yeah, or you see that. So we, uh, Marilyn will send it to you. So uh, Izumi, Izumi, the floor is yours. Um, I, I have a question before I make to, to the chair that uh, I'm going to talk about not the five ones already uh, is presented, but a uh, different one called World Internet Conference to share. I may, may I do that now or later? It's up to you. No, no, please go ahead. Thank now you. we have a free-floating discussion and okay. that everything is on the table. Good. Um, some of or many of you may have heard World Internet Conference. don't know how many. Um, that was organized in November 19th to the 21st in a small town of Wuchen, about two hours mm -hmm. outside of Shanghai. I got the invitation through the, uh, from the organizing committee, but through the CNNIC. But it was a very amazing conference. I see only a few, um, Pablo and some others were in the same conference. But it was aimed at, by the very strong will of the government of China to become the Davos of the Internet Conference of Thought. So they tried to assemble many leaders, especially from the business side. The um, founder and chairman of the Alibaba, Jack Ma, who is now the richest individual in China, showed up as like a rock and roll star. <laughs> but the founder of LinkedIn um, came from the US. Uh, the CEO and president of ICANN also joined that the big name. Um, they say four out of the world's uh, richest 10 internet companies are from China. And they are all there. China Telecom Unicom there. Uh, world GSM Association chair was there. On and on. So it was, and I hope that Pablo may follow me up in this evaluation. I have a very mixed evaluation of this conference, but it certainly has some implication to the kind of the um, discussion we are doing, um, whether positive or not, I don't know yet. Um, as I mentioned, the very strong will of the government was expressed by the fact that the uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, came uh, physically to read out the message from the President Xi, the Chinese President's message specifically addressed to, as well as the Prime Minister came to the next city of Hanzhou on the day two Somehow he didn't show up to the site, but all the VIPs were invited to go there and have a talk. Um, and there were about 600 reporters to the participants of 1,000. They were all mostly mobilized by the government, but they're very keen to cover. Uh, very interesting. I was interviewed three or four times, by the way. Um, and the composition of the meeting is also very interesting in that they combine the business aspects of the internet, as well as some political, um, people's safety and security, um, the governance. There was a very interesting internet governance um, forum uh, hosted by the CNNICA gang, high-level dialogue, on and on. And, and unfortunately, somehow, the English website is not available anymore. It was uh, active. Um, don't know why, but uh, it's very difficult now to see. But there are several media coverages, including Wall Street Journal and that stuff. At the um, early morning of the day three, the last day, we got the envelope um, beneath the door. And there's a, there was a draft declaration was given to all participants. And we were asked if we want to make any changes or you know, revision, please contact the secretary, send the information or your comment by 8 in the morning. We all expected, therefore, to have this declaration read out at the end you know, closing ceremony, which never happened. And I, I have reported that to some, some of the MAG members through the mailing list, so I don't want to go to the details. But w what we found out from the conversation at the uh, reception was a minister organizing this said, so many people you guys uh, didn't agree with, so we didn't call it a declaration. But yet they 
defined the Suchen as the permanent place for holding this Internet summit for many years to come. Um, the positive end, I would say, is they at least showed um, sort of willingness to dialogue, no matter how the positions are different. It's a pity that high-level Western countries, governments, didn't really show up. They largely sent their consulate and embassy people. But um, the business participated. Of course, there are certain negative aspects, such as that it's not really multi-stakeholder. There were no civil society representation as such. It's not um, bottom-up. But still, um, ha having these different um, people on board and have different topics together, much wider than the IGF, gives us some thought that whether to just discuss the Internet governance issues by the Internet governance uh, sort of people or involve the other kind of the interests together, there are different ways to address these issues. And clearly, to China, the Internet is very much an engine of growth and economy. They take it very, very seriously from the top to the bottom. So that's where I see. And another, finally, I would say very strong emphasis onto the mobile. That was really given, that led the sort of the entire agenda. That's another findings. I will stop here. Thank you very much. So thank you, Izumi, for this, uh, for this uh, uh, information. So very, very good that China is hosting that type of event. Uh, the biggest internet communi user community live in that country. And uh, so uh, at, to my knowledge, there are many dozen uh, replicas of uh, World Economic Forum uh, annual event in Davos in different areas. So may maybe that will become one, one in um, uh, related to internet. Uh, so I will now look. Marilyn is next on the list. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm going to uh, call attention to all of you uh, for how important it is to pay attention to the scribes' capturing of your comments and your name. Uh, that's not why I took the floor, but a uh, correction to Azumi's comments, for instance, is that there were 1,000 participants, not 61,000 participants. And other speakers are not actually getting their name captured. So let me just um, note that, uh, because it's important for the transcript, particularly for those who are remote and are not able to participate. I, I wanted to speak, um, I'll speak first of all about um, um, a very brief comment about, uh, in follow-up to my comments about the Net Mundial initiative in the following way. My view is that we have a huge amount of work to do as the MAG to advise on planning our IGF 2015. We have also been alerted to now as a uh, MAG and a stakeholder community to a number of very critical events and activities where our future is in the hands of others and not uh, perhaps so much in our own hands. What is in our hands is to do with excellence the job that we are appointed to do or that make the contribution that we can make. Too much time spent on any other um, debate may be a diversion from our focusing uh, very, very closely on our own work. Having said that, I want to, um, and my comment there is related to the issue of in order for us to fulfill our responsibilities, take up intercessional work, improve and extend best practices, approach the national and regional IGF initiatives about perhaps engaging um, in a more direct linkage uh, in some way if it suits their bottom-up consensus-based organizational um, um, structure to do so in the IGF itself. That means a huge amount of work for us and a huge amount of work for our MAG chair and for our secretariat. Let me go on now to comment on and to thank the other presenters. I'm sorry Doreen is gone um, because I um, uh, was present at the ITU Plenipod as well as certain other, some others who are here um, and uh, observed and even contributed perhaps through 
um, discussions to the resolutions that are passed. There is indeed um, sig significant work for all of us to be aware of, including um, the interest of the ITU in engaging in the WISIS follow-up. It is particularly important to me as a member of the CSTD Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation to support Peter Major's call to attention for all of us. The fact that the um, uh, mapping exercise is open until the end of the month and I hope that all of you will take a look at it and consider making a contribution. There are a number of us who are um, members of that working group from civil society, the technical community and business and I know that we would all welcome the opportunity to talk with you about how to effectively do that. On the, uh, the concept, the, the uh, road ahead that um, Aliyah Armstrong mentioned that we'll, we will learn more about um, really um, only in June, um, I think we do need to be thinking in parallel as concerned stakeholders about how we work collaboratively across all of the stakeholder groups to engage with um, government colleagues in New York who will be making decisions and think about how we help to contribute to providing information and um, uh, even advice on uh, how to best engage with stakeholders and how to uh, uh, consider the way forward uh, post-2015. Uh, to me, last Friday I had the opportunity to hear Adama Samusako, the president of the first PREPCOM, and Giannis Karklins, the president of the second PREPCOM preparatory process for WISIS. And Adama really struck a chord in me of reminding me that um, it is really, uh, the WISIS was about creating the information society for all. And that is really a vision that I think the IGF was supposed to contribute to, which is what we're here to do in the next three days. But it also reminded me that the information society is not just about uh, access, but it is also about uh, capability and uh, expertise and also about content. And I, it was a very inspirational uh, reminder that uh, looking ahead, hopefully, the IGF will be able to contribute, um, not just this year, but in the years ahead to creating the Information Society. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, I'm now calling on Jivan. Hi. My name is Jivan. And that's J-I-V-A-N for those taking uh, the transcription. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm amazed that whoever is taking the transcription that they can uh, uh, write so quickly uh, everything that is written. So kudos for them. Uh, but yeah, it is a challenge with all the names that we have from different places in the world. <laughs> I am uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Macedonia. I'm head of the Department for Public Diplomacy and, and Public Relations. But at the core, I'm a multilateral uh, diplomat. And I say this only because um, I think that uh, I've been in many uh, general debates in September, and it's a quite a hectic uh, affair. If the Internet Governance Forum is a lot of people whizzing around and about from one place to another, this is the same thing in New York, but it's only prime ministers and, and presidents with about uh, uh, bodyguards uh, varying between two and 20 around them. So it's but it's a good time to get the attention of the people that I think that we should be trying to get the attention of um, uh, about uh, what we're doing, uh, especially given that the vote will be coming, uh, well, the, uh, the mandate will be renewed through ECOSOC and the, the General Assembly, and that will be just before the November meeting of the IGF. So in line with my previous comment on a communication strategy, I think that this is one of those milestones that we need to think about. Uh, of communicating uh, the importance of uh, not just the IGF, uh, but I would say the Internet. And I think that uh, a celebration of the Internet that we start off um, as, as, a, as a strategy uh, of engagement from now until then is a good way uh, to, for us to uh, 
present the importance of the IGF just before our mandate is renewed uh, and actually for the mandate to be renewed exactly in that, uh, in that frame of, uh, of, of thinking. So um, I think that we should think about, but there are government representatives here, uh, quite, a, quite a few I think, um, uh, we should think about uh, some kind of an event during the general debate in New York in uh, September. Um, perhaps um, under the auspices of UNDESA or perhaps under Brazil or perhaps another country uh, that uh, would uh, hold it at a relatively high level, so ministerial level is uh, high, high enough to attract the attention. It doesn't have to be a summit. It doesn't have to be anything higher than that. And then to present it as an enabler of the SDGs that are coming uh, as the new framework of thinking uh, in terms of development uh, goals for the, for the future. If there ever was a good enabler uh, of growth and, uh, and de development, that's the Internet. And we need to um, show that to the world uh, next year. Well, thank you, Jivan. Uh, though, small, small remark. If the decision on the extension of the mandate of IGF will not be taken by the second committee this year, I think that then the next opportunity will be as a result of the WSS plus 10 review uh, event in December uh, 2015. I don't think that General Assembly in 2015, in September, October, will take any decisions. That will go automatically to, to the... Uh, to the um, uh, high-level meeting. So I have next uh, uh, Mark Carvel, UK, on my list. Thank you, Chair, and um, many thanks to all the presenters for their uh, clear, informative presentations on all the initiatives and um, processes that are intersecting with the IGF. Uh, the updating is uh, very valuable and uh, I hope colleagues are uh, taking account of uh, the timelines and, and opportunities to, to contribute. Um, I, I would just make a couple of points with regard to the CSTD um, key documents. Um, Firstly, the draft report. Um, we think it's a very thorough study of the background and implementation of the WISIS recommendations. I, I, I'll just take, uh, make one observation where I think it understates uh, the situation, and that is with regard to the regional and uh, national IGFs. There's, there's a paragraph. Um, covering this, just one paragraph, covering this on page um, uh, 148 or thereabouts. Um, I, I think it fails really to take account of how the IGF template has, has been replicated um, at the national and regional level in all continents um, and has therefore become an important network within the internet governance ecosystem, which indeed we're, we are going to discuss here uh, with, with regard to um, intersessional activity. So I just point that out as, as, um, as one uh, important aspect of, of developments over the last 10 years, the emergence of these multi-stakeholder fora. Uh, as, as, as something we ought to bear in mind in terms of the um, currency, if you like, of, of the report. Um, and of course, we've also seen governments, individual governments, institute multi-stakeholder processes into their policy making. Brazil is a very obvious example. The UK, we have our own uh, multi-stakeholder advisory group on internet governance comprising around 45 um, stakeholder representatives from business, civil society, and, and the technical community. So that's another aspect of implementation which has sort of had a very important um, ripple effect, if you like, throughout uh, internet governance processes. Um, secondly, the, uh, the mapping of international internet public policy issues. This is, as you've underlined, Chair, a very important um, exercise with previous attempts at it and and uh, uh, we really appreciate all the hard work um, and the monumental effort that's gone into 
uh, the preparation of um, the mapping document and, and the database. Um, we've had uh, an initial review of it, and there were comments last week, of course, as um, as Murphy recounted at uh, at the intercessional, and, and indeed Peter. Um, and there's one month left, really, to um, to react and and fill in. Uh, some important gaps which we in the UK government have, have identified. So I, I just draw that to the attention of, uh, of all the members of this meeting and those listening uh, remotely that this is a key document we, you should draw your immediate attention to uh, because it has a, a critical uh, it will be a critical input into, into the WISIS review, into debates about whether there should be another process uh, with regard to enhanced cooperation and so on. So, uh, I, as I say, I, I, th I think that's key. We very much welcome that effort. Uh, we think it needs further uh, uh, work on it in, in uh, completing the mapping uh, and uh, you know, reviewing where real gaps may still persist, which, which need to be addressed uh, in, in some way. Um, Finally, I, these CSDT documents I find pretty difficult to locate. Uh, they, they are available through the UNCTAD uh, website, and I, I don't know how many times I've tried to lay my hands, for example, on the CSDT Working Group on Improvements report. Uh, it, I find it very difficult to, to get to the exact uh, place uh, online. So I, I would recommend for the outcome of this um, uh, meeting that we have some kind of readily available digest of key links to these documents so that people can uh, uh, access them uh, easily and understand the process for responding. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. Actually, you're not the only one. I was uh, desperately looking for, the, for that uh, link yesterday and also failed to find. That's, that's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Dear colleagues, we have half an hour remaining for today's session, and I have a number of requests for the floor, and, and uh, I would like to give the uh, floor to Pablo, to Robert, to Amelia, and uh, to ICANN uh, before drawing, uh, drawing this uh, list uh, to, the, to the end. I see Patrick uh, is, is the last one. No, really, we need we need to uh, finish. I will I will take that one, but that's it. Uh, but please be concise uh, because we st still need to give um, a possibility answering those uh, questions that have been raised uh, before uh, closing. Uh, Pablo, please, you have a floor. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I'm Pablo, PAPLO, from APNIC. Uh, APNIC is the regional internet registry in Asia Pacific. I'm here on behalf of Paul Wilson, a salient uh, IGF member. He couldn't be here with you all, but um, APNIC has been an active supporter of the IGF since its inception and will continue to do so. We very much hope uh, for the renewal of the IGF next year and to participate in the IGF in Joao Pessoa. Um, I think uh, one uh, issue for consideration of uh, the IGF MAG and for the IGF in general for next year is integration. So many processes have been opened and have had progress in 2014, and we just heard uh, about a few of them. Um, and uh, it, it's hard to follow all of them, uh, for sure. Uh, we have had uh, reports on C, uh, of WISIS Plus 10, on CSTD, on Enhanced Cooperation, the Net Mundial Initiative. There is also the IANA Stewardship Transition Process. In Asia Pacific, uh, we, we had the APR IGF. I was just talking with CETA. They just had the IGF uh, session in Indonesia last week. Um, I would like to agree with Isumi about the importance of the Wushan Summit, uh, another and very important example of an instance or a space uh, that it's really important to follow and um, uh, uh, take consideration of. Uh, all of these processes uh, um, have uh, some reflection and, and are summarized or converged somehow in the IGF and, and I think um, 
uh, it's important uh, that, that we uh, think about how to make some sense, to wrap up, to summarize, to, to see how these processes are reflected at the IGF, uh, which is, uh, all of us agree, a very important uh, place uh, to, to gather. So um, I just would like to, to throw this in, in, into the table and, and think about uh, integration uh, in next year. Thanks. So thank you very much. Uh, now I'm, uh, I'm calling on uh, Robert, Robert, uh, Robert Shegler from, from Russian Federation. Robert, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I have a question for Translender. I, uh, can I speak Russian? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yes, you can speak Russian. Please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you can use uh, channel number one. Um, I have a short statement to make. It is first a uh, mundial, and it's important not to confuse the issue. Uh, there was n there was not even a rough consensus, and it's also important to know that many of the participants. They, they were there, they spoke out, and it, it's not possible not to take into consideration the position of the governmental sector, because governmental sector, after all, are the people who are responsible for the decisions which they take. And if we set up principles which are not going to be upheld afterwards, then unfortunately it's just an imitation of the process. I'm not against a multi-stakeholder approach. I'm not against a dialogue, but I am for an efficient process. So it is essential to be quite clear and not confuse each other. I was also present at the Chinese conference. The level of the conference was pretty high, and I can confirm that which was mentioned before. Now, continuing with the with Mundial, I would like to the next IGF to uh, attach greater importance to the transparency of our decision taking, so that there will be no misunderstanding after all. Was there a consensus or there was no consensus? Was a decision adopted or it was not adopted and so forth? Of course, it's a complex pro matter because it's not easy to come to a solution which is acceptable to all. But the transparency will help a lot. I would also like to draw your attention to the need to attach importance to regional initiatives. As a representative of a parliament, I would be very interested to know what are the regional practices in other countries with regard to the laws pertaining to Internet. No doubt other people are also interested in that, because there is now a certain risk of fragmentation of Internet where the legislation in some countries is not only not harmonized, but actually can be contradictory. And so I understand this is something that we are going to discuss in the future. But at any rate, I'd like, I wanted to raise the point already now. Thank you. I thank you very much, Radzvel, for these comments and for the suggestions which you made. Yes, tomorrow we will discuss those proposals. And to the next uh, speaker on my list, uh, that is uh, Amelia from Sweden. Good day. Uh, my name is Amelia Andersdotter. I've been a member of the European Parliament, um, and so I believe that I have an experience and a point of view, uh, which is different from the stakeholders that are normally listed as participants in these meetings. So um, parliaments form a very special role in the democratic system, which is that they're directly elected by the public in order to hold the executive, which is normally the government, accountable or responsible for its actions. Also. Parliaments provide instructions to the executive about what they are meant to be engaging with. Um, 
In my view, uh, we could easily extend the list of stakeholders to parliaments because their role is so particular um, in the governance processes of democratic countries that it's, um, um, it's a bit unfair to place them in the same category of governments since they are quite clearly meant to be almost the op opposite of what an executive is. Um, but with this, um, parliaments assume the moral responsibility for normal, normative decisions in a society. And I think the problem we're seeing with internet governance is that a lot of the decisions turn out to be normative. Even technical standards can be normative. Who gets to decide these norms? It is very clear that the constituencies that I've been representing expect parliaments to decide norms. And the parliaments additionally also expect to have the leeway to decide norms for their communities. And so um, what we're facing with the uh, WCIS or uh, with the Net Mondial initiative is uh, things like the Charter of Net Mondial, where the European Commission contributed to the outcome. The European Commission is an executive institution. They don't technically have the right to be normative in the institutional framework where they exist. It's not meant to be their function. Um, and so how does a, an institution like the European Parliament, for instance, interact with this government and how do we, um, uh, with that kind of charter, and how do we ensure that the, that the uh, expectation of the citizens in Europe is actually fulfilled? Um, there's been some cases where um, civil society actors in the Internet Governance Forum have brought up the opportunity of making supporting statements, ensuring that the normative discussions that occur in best practices forums or in the IGF at large can be somehow consolidated into uh, papers that can then be used to help and sustain from the global community normative discussions in legislatures. And I would very much like to see the MAG, but also perhaps the Net Mondial Initiative representatives um, reflect further on, on these uh, points. Um, also, I feel a bit concerned with um, an initiative like Net Mondial um, and the formation of a new platform because we have these unresolved difficulties with the Internet Governance Forum where um, normative discussions are technically being had but not quiet. And Net Mondial seems also to be a place where normative discussions are being had but not quite legitimately. And why do we need two global forums for somehow semi-illegitimate normative discussions that anyway uh, at the end can hold very little public support from the billions of individuals that ultimately be, will be impacted. Um, where I would like to uh, hear reflections from the uh, United Nations agencies, um, but perhaps also from the driving forces between the Net Mondial initiative is exactly how they resolve these normative consequences, because we have them in, in like net neutrality clearly is normative, competition laws for the telecom sector clearly, copyright is a very normative discussion. They are discussions that we have had, but where the reconnection back to the people who are ultimately concerned citizens has been extremely low and how can we ensure that that is not the case and how can we primarily help parliaments get a more active role in this? So thank you, thank you very much. I, I, th I think, uh, uh, Amelia, you, you can now constitute a group uh, with your colleague Robert from the, from the Russian parliament, so you will be the, <laughs> the, the uh, uh, deputy group here. Though uh, w another remark, uh, the legitimacy of IGF stems from the decision of the WSIS summit and the uh, uh, endorsement by the United Nations General Assembly. So I think that that, that is absolutely clear and we're uh, acting under the uh, auspices or let's say in the framework of that, that uh, decision. I have three more, more uh, speakers uh, on my list before going to answer and then one from remote uh, participant but I would like to limit your interventions, specifically, Nigel, yours, because you have been uh, speaking already once. Your one minute, please, Nigel. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll be, be very brief indeed. I, I just really wanted to, uh, to, to thank the presenters we had and to particularly mention the, the work that the CSTD have put in train, both in terms of the uh, the mapping document that's been referred to and the contribution to the WISIS 10-year review. I, I think these are in, enormously important contributions and they're, they're important not only in their substance but in the way they're put together. And here we return to a, a, a theme touched on this morning by a number of speakers in that they have been put together in a, a multi-stakeholder way that people have had the chance to input to them. 
the mapping document which uh, has been mentioned and which we have now the opportunity to uh, uh, update as uh, others including Marilyn has talked about sets out a clear understanding of the issues that we're tackling on the internet governance front those that have had attention in various UN multi UN intergovernment uh, fora but also in multi stakeholder fora and I think it's a major contribution uh, to the work that we're going to take forward in the WSIS plus 10 review and I think the CSD should be commended for it which I think means it's even more important and as was suggested by our, our colleague from uh, Macedonia having some form of ability where stakeholders can come together at a senior level in New York and reflect on the interaction between the WSIS and the, the, uh, the, the uh, sustainability development goals I think is equally important. Thank you. So thank you very much, Nigel. Um, Patrick, your two minutes. Thank you. Um, for my colleagues who, who have uh, seen me at other conferences, you'll know that I sort of have a uh, moral obligation to uh, make an analogy at every Internet conference to either Star Trek or Star Wars. And uh, since nobody's done that quite yet, I'll, I'll take the opportunity to do that now. Um, this has been very useful, I think, to hear uh, the various different updates from NetMundial and on the various different uh, other initiatives. In fact, I've spoken more about NetMundial initiative here at this particular event than I have in the entire past year about any other single Internet governance initiative. And if I could be just a little bit provocative, I think we need to focus a little bit more on the IGF itself. And I'd be interested in your view here. Here's the Star Trek analogy. In, um, in one of the episodes, uh, Captain Kirk calls down to Scotty and says, Scotty, I need a status report. Scotty reports back, in four hours, Captain, the ship's going to blow up. And what does the Star Trek do? Well, the, everybody on the Enterprise, they get together and they figure out how to make sure that their destiny continues. And we're in that boat right now. Uh, I'd sure love to have your, your thoughts, uh, Giannis, about what can the MAG do? Not to be spectators in this, not to learn second or third hand what's happening in New York about Mexico or other proposals, but how can we be proactive in the sense that, uh, that Jivan proposed about getting together and really trying to drive the destiny? How can we support you in the efforts to, uh, to re-engage the IGF and to make sure that it's renewed, not just renewed on the same terms as before, but actually you know, with a stronger uh, you know, wing, wind beneath its sails in order to move forward. I'd be very interested in your view on that. I know it's something that's really on my mind. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, especially for analogy, though I must say I haven't heard that, that uh, this ship is going to blow up in four hours. I, I hope it, 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 it will continue for next at least 10 years uh, af after the Brazil meeting. Uh, so, but um, I, I think that the discussion uh, or information exchange that we have now, uh, which uh, at the first glance may seem not directly relevant to our conversation about IGF. <clears throat> I think still is very relevant because we're uh, uh, getting to the, to, to, we're absorbing all the knowledge that will help us tomorrow and day after tomorrow to shape the, the contours of Brazil meeting in order to make sure that IGF stays on track uh, for a long period of time and is seen as a useful contribution to the ongoing sort of decision making which is taking, pla pla uh, which is taking place elsewhere. I do not expect IGF come to the stage that we will start making decisions. No, but we will inform decisions which will be taken elsewhere, either in the Russian Parliament or in the European Parliament or in the European Commission or any other government in the world. So that, that is the mandate of, of, of the uh, IGF. And of course, we need to work uh, to improve our, our outcomes that they become more relevant also, not only to policymakers, but everybody who is involved in, in internet uh, in, in, in daily work. And hopefully, we will get there. Uh, Sylvia is the next on my list and the last one. I'm sorry. We, need, <coughs> we have a limited time. Tomorrow Thank you, morning Mr. Chairman. Will, will, be, will be possibility to intervene again. Sylvia, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sylvia Bidart. I'm a new member of MAG, so uh, it's my first time in the ICF scenario, and I hope to contribute with positive uh, things and, and with commitment. Um, I'm Vice President of WITSA for Latin America. I'm General Director of ALETI, uh, but I'm 
even I'm new in ICF process, I'm all linguistics process, beginning with Paris, uh, Geneva, Tunis, Dubai, etc. And uh, I would like to point that the importance to redefine the word access uh, and the action needed to, to enhance and access. We are speaking about, for example, growth, inclusiveness, soft skills, bringing industries, capacity building, as well as many others of the, the, the points of, uh, that Anktad and Andesa uh, said before that I really appreciate very much. Um, Latin America is shown in efforts. We see process in Latin America is held by uh, the UN ECLAC Secretariat. And uh, in last min prime ministerial meeting held in Costa Rica, we, we agreed <laughs> to try to join uh, efforts and uh, to hold the next ministerial meeting of uh, ELAC, ECLAC in Mexico, and uh, along with the ICF of Latin America. I would like to, to know what are the activities and priorities of the other regions, not just Latin America and the Caribbean. And um, I would like to encourage all stakeholders to join efforts and events as well. Finally, I would like to congratulate ICF for the organization of this event. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Remote participant. Thank you. This is from Marilia Maciel from Brazil. She says, the approved modalities of WISIS plus 10 review make it mostly an intergovernmental process, even though it will accept the inputs of other stakeholders. After Net Mundial, it was made clear that a meaningful document could be drafted by means of a bottom-up multi-stakeholder process. My suggestion would be that a WISIS outcome document is drafted in a collaborative manner following the methodology of Net Mundial. This multi-stakeholder document could offer useful inputs to governments that will be negotiating in New York. Governments could incorporate the points they find useful. The document would also be able to reflect a multi-stakeholder vision for the post wisis The process to draft, it, draft this document could be anchored in the IGF, which is our main multi-stakeholder forum. A best practice group could be created to facilitate this. One of the sub-themes in the agenda of the IGF should be the WISIS Plus 10 review. The IGF could present a useful contribution related to issues that fall under its scope. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Juan Alfonso, either you take one minute now or five minutes tomorrow. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairman. First of all, I want to speak Spanish following, uh, well, taking advantage of the fact that we have interpreters and whom I'd like to congratulate at this time for their excellent work, something we don't do very often. I'm Juan Fernandez, uh, so you can get the spelling right up there. Uh, I'm new to MAG. Just one question. I'd like to have a minute now and five tomorrow. What, I, what I'd like to ask is, I, I want to look at the agenda here. There's a problem there. When are we going to be talking about cooperation or not between IGF and this initiative or others? Can, can we do that tomorrow? Is it scheduled for tomorrow? Muchas gracias. Uh, we will be talk, talking about uh, uh, the correlation or cooperation between IGF and Net Mondial Initiative, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, depending on advancement of our conversation. So, and uh, certainly uh, uh, tomorrow and the day after, please feel free to t ask for the floor. I cannot grant you five minutes since you have used already one, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think we will find the right, right compromise. So thank you very much. I think we had a good, good exchange, and we have a number of questions uh, that uh, were raised uh, during, during this uh, period, and I would like now to ask those uh, presenters who would like to, not necessarily, but who would like to answer very briefly to those, to those questions. Uh, and then, and then um, uh, 
uh, Benedicta will uh, make a final sort of conclusions uh, of uh, today's discussion. So, Peter, I think I didn't hear any questions uh, to you. Uh, please. Well, the simplest way to, to access the documents is you just Google CST the UNCTAD and it will take you to the website and then you go to the intersessional tag and you find the documents. So this is the simplest. I, I, I couldn't find my, my way either. Sorry. So thank you very much, though I must, I must say that this forum should remain technology neutral. There are many more uh, search <laughs> engines <laughs> than the one which was just mentioned. Uh, Mervi, please. Um, thank you. And I apologize from the part of the Secretariat of the challenge that you have encountered in finding the right pay, page, but I'm uh, happy that uh, Peter has uh, <laughs> facilitated uh, that. Um, I just wanted to say a few words. First of all, thank you very much uh, to those who commended the work of, of the CSTD Secretariat. Um, on, on the mapping, um, I just wanted to uh, note that it was really a challenge also for, for the Secretariat. Given the broad array of, of Internet governance, we, we were very conscious that this was just a snapshot, something that we could take forward just a little bit. And um, also we were struggling with a very limited time span uh, for this work. So we are really grateful for any uh, comments and, and we appreciate uh, any factual information on public policy issues and mechanisms to improve the, the document. So please send, send your comments on that. The document will go as a CRP, conference room paper, to, uh, to the annual session. So it will not be a formal document. It will, will be something that is submitted by the Secretariat for uh, the reflection of, of the Commission and, and possibly integration uh, to the 10-year uh, uh, review. Um, and then a couple of words on, on uh, what the Chair said in the beginning, how these processes can be linked to the IGF. Uh, uh, as for the CSTD review, we will be in a very uh, critical phase in October as we meet in the IGF. Uh, the CSTD's 10-year review is, is over. Basically, it has been uh, submitted to the ECOSOC and, and uh, uh, hopefully also adopted by it. But then uh, in New York, uh, the delegates, the governments over there are in the midst of uh, negotiations uh, for the final uh, outcome of, of the overall review. So I would see uh, the IGF as an important op opportunity for the IG community to vocalize their views on how they see the, the, the draft that uh, will most probably will be uh, available then. And uh, frankly, it's not so a uh, long uh, journey from New York to or you are Passoa, so uh, perhaps uh, you manage to uh, also encourage some of the delegates from New York to attend uh, the IGF session. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, Elia, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, very briefly, uh, I saw a couple of comments, I think, that were directed to you in Dessa's way, and it was really about what can MAG members do to help renew the IGF mandate? Um, how do we map out the process? Um, and are there high-level events that can bring this to the attention of um, the General Assembly? So going back to my traffic analogy when, we, when I talked about coming out in the same car or out of the same tunnel, I think also because you can see the, the complexity, the richness of the stakeholders and of the processes and of the issues. Um, my only, I, I would say on the one hand, it's absolutely important and I think it is the intention of member states to get everybody's input and views put in. On the other hand, there is the challenge that without an orderly process, and given that we have such a short time, um, if we all rush, you could have a traffic jam and not get to your intended destination in an orderly fashion. And I can say this because uh, when we watch the post-2015 development agenda, um, uh, you know, uh, setting process, again, you had an issue where, uh, you know, a lot of stakeholders, a lot of issues, um, all wanting to get to the same place. But I think there were many tracks, and the important thing was to 
give the member states a leading role as had been agreed upon previously. So I would just um, say that let's be mindful of all the different roles that everybody has and try to um, not have a chaos, but you know, have a well-coordinated multi-track processes where everybody's views and visions are, are included. And that also, sometimes if we pay so much attention to the traffic issue, sometimes we might get diverted into another, another direction and not arrive at the intended destination, which is after WISIS, then what? What is the vision for the world beyond information society? Thank you. Thank you, Elia. Flavia, uh, Flavia if you may respond yeah, very briefly. Uh, very quickly, yeah. Uh, as Nora already mentioned before, there will be a Q&A uh, session on Thursday. Uh, in fact, this is part of the meeting of the Transitional Council. From now on, all meetings of the Transitional Council will be open and accessible uh, online by uh, Adobe Connect or by Adigo uh, Telephony. So you just look at the, on the site and you see the, the schedule of these meetings and they are open. And so and there is always uh, a 30 minutes uh, slot in the beginning of the meeting for Q&A. So the, the questions you have, I must honestly uh, respond that I do not have the, the, the exact answers to the questions on principles, for instance, of uh, legally binding or partially uh, acceptance of some uh, uh, principles or if principles change. I, I honestly do not have the, the answers, but I think are good questions to, to be asked uh, at this uh, session on Thursday. So thank you very much. Uh, and now I would like to uh, invite uh, Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca to uh, conclude uh, today's work. Benedicto, please. Uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, this is certainly not an easy task because so many notions were brought to, to the fore and in so many different issues. Uh, however, one point I'd like to, to concur with something you said before is that the discussion we have had, particularly this uh, afternoon, was very important as we prepare for IGF-10 in Brazil in order that it will help us to shape the, the event in a way that is relevant to what is taking place in the different processes. I think it's very important that as we prepare for IGF-10 that we try to relate to the existing discussions in regard to Internet governance and we try to, to, to dialogue and to interact with those processes in a way that is productive. Well, one point I have been making uh, consistently is that we cannot uh, in a way live in silos uh, ignoring uh, when we are in a multi-stakeholder format, we just deal with those issues from, and then we ignore what is taking place at the UN and other fora. Uh, I think it's very important that we try to build bridges in which the processes will be relating to each other. Uh, and it, there is a very important aspect here that this requires mutual respect and mutual acceptance, which is something that is not uh, for granted because uh, either in a multi-stakeholder format or in multilateral format, uh, some of the participants do not recognize the other uh, way of doing things. This is the kind of uh, contradiction and uh, opposition as, as a national delegation, and then I'm, I'm speaking as the government, uh, we have tried to, to reflect on this and that was the vision that President Dilma conveyed at the beginning of Net Mundial, that we are very committed, firmly committed, totally committed to the multi-stakeholder approach, but at the same time we cannot lose sight of issues that require to be addressed from the decision-making uh, point of view in a multilateral aspect. So I think as we move towards IGF, then I think it's very important to take cognizance of what is taking place at the UN, at ITU and try to relate to those processes in a way that is respectful of uh, each uh, uh, process, each for uh, own standing. Uh, I'd like to make very short comments because I, I know we are already uh, almost behind schedule. Uh, 
Uh, in regard to Net Mundial initiative, uh, we, this is an issue that the Brazilian Steering Committee will, yeah, is reflecting upon, and of course there will be this uh, conference call on Thursday. Uh, however, having been involved with uh, Net Mundial uh, from day zero, and apologies to Nigel for using that expression, <laughs> but uh, I'd like to make a few points. First of all, as much was said about financial resources and maybe the, the kind of finite uh, capacity we have. I, I guess one of the points of having uh, supported the Net Mundial Initiative is exactly trying to expand that base of support. So we are not looking at a very restricted basis which money will go to in this direction and that direction, but rather to expand the basis uh, of financial resources, human resources, uh, by bringing on board new participants. I think this is one, uh, one main element of, of the initiative. And the other, and then I would resort to the original call that was made by President Dilma, is that we intend, and we, I think we, that was achieved in Net Mundial, that this would be inclusive. Uh, we are aiming at, President Dilma was very clear that she wanted a very inclusive meeting in which all participants had a fair opportunity to contribute to the outcomes. We are aware that not all participants uh, at the end of the meeting endorse its outcomes. Uh, that was not the intended result. And this is something that should be reflected upon as we move forward in implementing, trying to build on Net Mundial's outcomes. I think we should not lose sight of the initial proposal that that would be inclusive. So if there is some aspect in which people feel alienated uh, and that would impede participation. I think certainly this is an aspect that should be revisited by the proponents. Uh, in regard to the other issues, uh, I would like also to concur with uh, previous speakers and my delegation was one that in the context of the enhanced cooperation working group uh, uh, was very firmly defending the notion that we need a mapping of, of the initiatives, the processes that are there so we can move away from the rhetorical aspects that sometimes have contaminated those discussions. I think from the moment we have a clear understanding of who is doing what and what can be improved in a systemic way to, to make the whole environment, I think that that will serve the purpose of all of us. So I think it's very good development that we have this mapping and we look forward for uh, uh, a more formal endorsement of, of that uh, proposal, maybe with some adoptions that will give us some common ground on which to work. And in that same direction, uh, our assessment of the Busan meeting, ITU meeting, is that it was a very good meeting in the way that we also have consensus, made decision, no vote was taken, and that also provides us with some common ground. So I'm, I'm saying this because there are so many positive developments taking place, but at the same time, some challenges for us to address as we prepare for IGF. I think the most important challenge is to uh, shape IGF in a way that will prove, uh, uh, not to ourselves that are here, but to uh, people that are outside th that process, the value of, of working that format. And in that sense, uh, the colleague from Macedonia and also from Croatia, I think they were reading our minds because in our internal discussion we have been exactly trying to reflect on what could be done uh, in New York to raise awareness of our process. I think that will require, and uh, I, we, are, uh, Brazil, would uh, feels very much responsible for, for raising uh, awareness in New York, but we'd like to be in partnership with delegations that are participating in this process that would also assist us in doing so in partnership also with the Secretariat. It would be important if we could devise some uh, event in New York, maybe more than one event, because I think having been in New York, I, I think we need maybe some event directed to those actual negotiators that are in the daily uh, operations and maybe some high level event. Uh, maybe even starting in the first quarter of next year. And it would be important if we could have a, a, 
a set in which uh, we have developing countries, developed countries uh, joining together with the Secretariat to, to make that happen in New York. I think that will show the legitimacy of, of the work we have been doing here. So I, I, I'll stop here. I think we'll have some many more aspects to develop, but we, we'll come back to this tomorrow. Thank you. So thank you, Benedicto, for, for your concluding remarks. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, for engaging with us. Before leaving, I have very bad uh, news to announce to uh, those who are coming from European region, uh, both from Eastern European and Western European, because this is not our for you. You have another meeting following this one. That's the bad news. The good news is that that meeting will take place in the restaurant, and that will be about Eurodig. This is just a reminder. So, and for others, uh, we're meeting, or I mean, for all of us, uh, we're meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp, uh, and uh, that will that will be the um, that will be the mag uh, meeting, uh, which is open to everybody who wants to observe the work of, of the mag, and this room will be split in two, and our meeting will be on that side. So, thank you very much. Please enjoy your evening, and see you all tomorrow. <laughs>